Hello, everybody. I am Brother Luke. Uh, welcome to this fun fellowship Friday night for the Church of the Eternally Secure. Uh, we've already had so much fun. I don't. I don't know if I can handle it more. It's just like me to it. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I am Brother Luke. Oh, look at that! Someone left their sign on. I forgot to do it. Oh. Now, see, it's even more fun now because I did that foolish thing and forgot to mute it. <laughs> but, uh, at least we got to say hello twice that way. That was uh, double the welcome for everybody. And uh, I've already made a fool of myself, so let's go let Crips go ahead. You go next. Oh, good. Yeah, but save, save yourself more embarrassment. <laughs> uh, yeah, like uh, Brother Luke said, we're already having fun before the show started. In fact, when Ben, when ben started uh, it, uh Sister Lisa just uh, made a real, a real good funny, and Brother Luke was laughing. I hadn't seen him laugh that hard in a while, so that was good. He had to control himself so we can go on, go on air. So, yeah, it's definitely a, a fun Fellowship Friday. I'm looking forward to it, and I'll uh, 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 save the surprise uh, for Brother Luke since he's the host. But uh, I'm looking forward to having uh, an old friend on tonight, and. Uh, Looking forward to the true and false questions, and I want to say hello to everyone in the chat. I hope you've had a good week, and um, I hope it's uh, a fun Fellowship Friday for you in the chat as well. Thank you. Yeah, well, all right. Since you hinted at it, we might as well cover that next. Uh, uh, Sister Jen is unable to be with us tonight, uh, and her brother uh, Stephen. Uh, uh, gosh, you've got such a long name, Stephen. Uh, uh, let me see. I'll read it here. Uh, Gosh, something, we're at war, I forgot. Man. Soldier for Christ, we oh, are yeah. at war. Soldier for Christ, we are at war. See, even Ben knows it. You need, to, you need to simplify that for me, brother. Come on. But uh, Stephen is uh, filling in and uh, <laughs> going to be on the panel tonight. So, brother Stephen, why don't you say hello to everybody? Hello to everybody. Oh, geez. <laughs> Uh, that's what he said to say. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I said. Okay. All right. Well, do, you, do you have anything you want to add to that? Or do you keep repeating everything I'm say tonight? <laughs> um, I don't know. I do I think, though, if you just continue repeating what I say, you can't go wrong doing that. See, this should really be fun because Steve and I have, have been on broadcast together uh, for quite a while, actually, and uh, we kind of have a, a, a fun uh, relationship. So, yes, it's been it a is. while. It has been a while, but I think you still got it, Steve. I think it's yeah. still in there. Well, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. Yes, I appreciate sir. that. All right. Well, I, I don't know about you, though. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. <I> don't know. <laughs> Oh well, my confidence is shattered. You know what? You know what? I, uh, I'm a, a little bit suspicious. I'm sorry. Uh, I had I had to. You know, you know what I'm suspicious. Don't say of? sorry. Don't. Uh, okay. I, I'm, I'm suspicious that uh, we're having so much fun that maybe everybody's high. Uh, I know I got high, I, but I got high on the most high. Says heavy drinker, but you talk about drinking in the Holy Spirit. Yeah, uh, drinking living living water, the Holy Spirit. So let's get high on the Most High. That's right. All right. Well, so okay. I, I have one announce, real quick announcement. Nick. Okay, this is for everyone, including Steve. Don't say you're just joking. Just l let it let it ride. Because if if someone misunderstands it, then yes, obviously you'll have to clarify because you don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. But it's better if you just let it go. Yeah. Okay. Chris okay. Well, here, here, here's 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 not a joke then. Okay. I, I am I, I am a Christian straight white male. Hello. <laughs> also married with children. Okay. Yeah. Right, let's move on. Let's move on. That too. Let's that move. too. For some reason, Steve, I don't know if you can hear what I'm talking because you're not acknowledging when I interrupt you. <laughs> Who does that? If I interrupt you, you got to stop for a second. Oh, well, good luck with that, brother Luke. Yeah. All right, let's, let's move on here. Let's, let's, let's see if Sister Angel's uh, uh, technology is working this time. Yeah, I think I, I think I got it figured out. I don't know what that was. It was a gremlin. Uh, 
I'm glad everybody else is super uh, super energized tonight because I am I am out of it. I was up last night cleaning carpet the carpets like all, all night so, because my ki I can't do it unless I stay up all night doing it because my kids won't let the carpet dry. So I'm a little bit brain dead um, and uh, I will uh, ho hopefully uh, get my contact high from from what I see going on here right now <laughs> the more the, the, as the show goes on but I'm really glad to be here with you guys and I'm so glad Steve uh, was able to join us tonight you know before the last uh, last five seconds of the show so that's that's good, that's good. Uh, but yes I'm just uh, just uh, happy to be here yeah, very what, good you don't point. want my one word answers again? <laughs> <laughs> that was the only time in life you've ever given one word answers. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I was impressed. Well, I was you. impressed because he, <laughs> he and I, I, I mean, I could have done it. So, good job. Angel, thank you're, you. You're not too far out of it. That was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Let's try to get the, through these introductions first. I'm like, Chris is going to say, why are you taking so long on, on the introductions? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. <laughs> All right. So, so <laughs> Teresa, will you say hi to everybody? She's not muted. No, she's unmuted. Yeah, hi, everybody. How are hey. you doing? I'm here. Uh, praise the Lord, everyone. I'm glad to be here this evening. Glad to be on the panel. Sounds like everybody's off to a good start. If I didn't know some of you guys better than I do, I would think somebody had a little too much to drink. <laughs> well, me or Steve? <laughs> I'm going to plead the fifth on that one. Okay. okay. Yeah, we might have too much Holy Spirit going on tonight. It, it <laughs> has to be Luke, not me or Jason. It can't be us. Right. Yeah. Hey, we're not the one with the heavy drinker t-shirt. Oh. <laughs> not only the heavy drinker t-shirt, but I'm officially a boozer because my last name is yes. Boozer. I was that about to true. say it. Yeah. That so go ahead. You can dox me all you want. You know my actual name, Boozer. Wow. So, okay. Brother Luke, uh, a yeah. question for you since yeah. you're so boldly wearing that shirt. What do you do if you're out in public? And, and people see that and someone has the courage to ask you, what does that mean? Well, that's exactly what I'm hoping for. Because yeah, it, it is. That, that opens the conversation for about Jesus. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I don't know what I would say exactly, but I would lead into that. Uh, I'm glad you asked. And this, yep. is, this is why I wear it. Yeah. There you go. Well, let's pretend. Let's say that I've run into you in the mall and I see that shirt and I said, hey, excuse me. What does that mean, heavy drinker? Yeah, okay. I said, well, I, I like to get high on the most high. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, man. You do? What lay does that mean? Lay what it does it mean? <laughs> What's it mean to get high on the most high? <laughs> so, I don't know. I, I, I don't have anything canned uh, response. I just I would just respond, but try sure. to, hey, this is an opportunity. This is why I would wear a shirt. Yeah. And, there's a lot of people that don't know how to start a conversation about Jesus, mm -hmm. but if you wear shirts that are provocative and it, it could cause people to ask you and, and why, why, that's what we're hoping for, right? Right. But we're looking for these opportunities to tell them about Jesus and this good yeah. news. Yeah. Yeah. And frankly, wearing, wearing a shirt is better than a bumper sticker because, you know, for obvious reasons. Yeah. I had a coworker years ago that was a, a believer that just a wonderful woman, uh, Deborah Rollins was her name, but she uh, 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 she said that she couldn't wear uh, put on her car one of these fishes, right? Uh, because she was afraid that she might get lose her temper one day and honk at somebody, and then they'd say, "See the fish," and it, it'd be bad representation for for Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't stopped everyone. <laughs> Hasn't stopped everyone from wearing putting the fish on their car. That's yeah, sure. yeah. Okay, well, um, let's say hello to the the chat room here. It looks like we've got uh, plenty of people wearing wearing to go. So let me remind everybody in the chat room if you are you're not already aware of this. Uh, Friday nights, the agenda is uh, we respond to true false statements that have been submitted. And uh, so we'll answer the questions, and that's the uh, what creates the, the conversation. Uh, but we want you to participate. Uh, we don't. We're not only interested in the answers from the panelists. We want your answers. So 
when our brother Ben posts the, the true false statement along with a link in the chat room, make sure you click on it and then you register your vote. Tell us if you think it's true or false and uh, you're free to respond in the chat room. But if you want your response to be acknowledged, if you want us to interact with you, or if you have a follow-up question, please put it in all caps. And that way, uh, you know, we'll, it'll, it'll stand out and we'll recognize it. And so in this case, it's okay to shout at us. All right? Amen. All right. Uh, unless there's something else needs to be said, do you want to go to the first question? Sure. Oh, Ben. I didn't let Ben say hi, did I? <laughs> Ben, I forget you so often. I, I don't know why, but I tend to do it. So he, let me apologize. To, ben, he used to do that to me too. <laughs> yeah. And no he, he'd do it. Yeah. It's your, you've been replaced with Ben for the one that I forget about all the time. Wow. Yeah, I was going to say, who was it that he used to forget all the time? <laughs> it's just Chris. It was just Chris. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, you just wait. In about 30 or 40 years, you, every time you walk into a room, you're going to say, why did I come into this room? <laughs> and I, was, I, I, I already do that. I don't know what you're talking about. I already do that. <laughs> I, I, wasn't, kids. I wasn't even producing either, Ben. I was actually on the on the uh, the panel, you know. <laughs> Yeah. On, on Wednesday night, he did that on Wednesday nights all the time. Yeah, very, very hard to forget him. He's right there in the panel with me, and yet I still would, would forget it all about him. Yeah, one time I, got him really uh, ben, I apologize, and I apologize in advance for next time I do it. Go ahead, Ben. Okay. Say hi. Very good. Hello, Hello, everyone. It's good to be here. Um, and I also have the same bad habit as uh, uh, Angel does is that I, I, I can only get stuff done, it seems like, at night, so I tend to be a night owl. Me too. Um, but um, yep. I did take a nap, so I'm ready to go. And I'm, it's good to be here, and I'm looking forward to the fellowship. And if you're ready, I'll post the first question now. Before you do, Ben, I just want to thank you for all the work you do producing and uh, getting all the questions together and sending them out and all that. I don't like to read the questions ahead of time, but I, I did happen to see them on, my, on the text thread today. So I glanced at them, but um, I know it's helpful uh, to you. have them. Yeah, you're quite welcome. Um, okay, yeah, please, please do it. post the first one, okay? Okay, the first question is true or false, and this is your uh, question, Luke. Experience is the best teacher. Mm -hmm. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go last. Uh, who's eager to go first? I'm eager. Go ahead, brother. Uh, well, first of all, it's a great question. Experience is the best teacher. Experience can be the best teacher, but I have met people that don't seem to learn from their experience. They experience things um, and uh, seem to keep repeating the same patterns again and again and again. And I have. I'll just be honest. <clears throat> um, I I now, at the age I am, at the level of uh, maturity that I'm, I'm at now, I, I certainly have learned from my experience. So for me, I would say certainly true. But the way that the question is phrased is experience is the best teacher. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go undecided for that reason. Uh, I think experience can be a, a good teacher, uh, especially uh, uh, if you're uh, if you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, I think, teaches you many things, uh, as well as being the comforter. I, I, be I believe him to be a teacher as well. Uh, so if you're paying attention, I think you can learn a lot that way. Uh, for someone that doesn't have the Holy Spirit, do they learn from their experiences? I don't know. It's a good question. Um, I don't normally answer undecided, but this is a tough one. So I I'm going to go with undecided tonight. All right. Well, maybe I, I suspect after we're all finished answering, you might become decided. So okay. we'll, we'll give you a second chance at the end here. Let's have Sister Lisa go next. No, I don't want to. <laughs> no, I'm good. Um, I would say it's leaning true. You know, I mean, it's not always true. Right. It really depends on whether or not the person indeed learns from their mistakes. Hopefully they will. Yeah. You know, I think it's that line from Forrest Gump, stupid is as stupid does. Mm -hmm. I really don't like to call people stupid, but there there sadly are <laughs> some stupid people in this world. But, um, you know, it's just like that statement says. They just keep doing the same thing over and over again. So they don't learn. Mm 
but um, people who get burned usually learn. Mm. So, <laughs> uh, so I'm going to say that's leaning true. But then the reason I only say leaning true instead of certainly true is, you know, the, the best teacher of, of what? That's kind of vague. So <laughs> it, it, it depends on what we're talking about. Because um, there's people that have a lot of knowledge, but they're still in darkness. So that's why I would say, you know, leaning true. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Well, I think that um, as far as I know, uh, this exact phrase is a cliche. Um, it's, it's not an idea that I just thought of. Uh, uh, I re I'm stating it because it's I've heard it said my whole life experience is the best teacher. So um, that's the way that's why it's written that way. I'm not trying to be creative the way I wrote it. I'm just stating it the way I've always heard it my whole life. OK, let's go with okay. Sister Angel next. Well, so I'm trying to think. Um... You know, I, I agree with the way Lisa said that it depends on what we're talking about because, you know, um, I, I just kept thinking about how the, 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 the law, you know, uh, of Moses was meant to uh, sort of be a, an object lesson in, um, you know, in, in what Christ uh, what Christ was promised to do and what, what the, the whole, you know, uh, it was our, our schoolmaster to, to lead us under Christ, to teach us why we needed a savior. And so in a way, to me, it, it seemed like a, a you know, learning, uh, I guess you could call it, you know, experientially, like learning by doing in a way, because a lot of people really struggle to understand that about what the whole purpose of all these laws were. And every single one of them is a, is a shadow of some aspect of salvation. So, because um, I was trying to think if if if, um, if if God would agree with the statement, because on the one hand, um, I do believe in a way uh, God would have, would would have us to actually just trust Him instead of having to learn from our mistakes, you know, um, which I think is a is kind of a big thing that uh, happened with the with the fall in the garden um, and with Adam and Eve. They uh, they didn't want to trust trust God and take his word for something, which I think God would consider actually good and not foolish, which I think a lot of the world would tell us is foolish and that you have to learn, learn from your mistakes and that, uh, that, you know, parents can't, uh, that you shouldn't just, you know, take your parents word for things that you have to learn your, the hard way. Right. That's what they call it. Learning the hard way. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it, you know, ideally we wouldn't have to do that. Um, but at the same time, uh, it, it would almost seem as it's, God knew from the beginning that we were going to, that we were going to have to, you know, we were going to have to learn the hard way. So it would seem that it's at least an on the ground reality that at least for most, for most things um, that yes, uh, experience is the best teacher. Although in my personal opinion, um, I, I, a lot of the things that I, I went through, uh, it, it wasn't until I had the Holy spirit showing me, how to how to actually um, benefit from my experiences uh, uh, that I actually uh, you know had a breakthrough and actually uh, really changed and became uh, and became you know uh, uh, I guess you could call it a functional human being or a, uh, or, or you know obviously I'm saved um, I was kind of just who knows how long I would have got, you know, been uh, groping in blindness, just uh, darkness, just not really being able to connect the dots. So it's hard to say. I think, um, I think our, uh, but for most things, yes, I would say experience is the best teacher. I think, you know, when we're talking about worldly things, but at the same time, for me, it, it, you know, the Holy Spirit really had to, to come in um, and, uh, and take my hand and show me how to interpret my experiences to actually really, to really benefit from them. So I guess you could say leaning true. Good answer. I thought. <laughs> well, okay. oh, thank you. Thank thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's really high. I feel like I'm overthinking it. Maybe we're all really overthinking. <laughs> I don't yeah, like, feel like I'm overthinking it. But. So, so far, I'm a little bit surprised with everybody's answers. Uh, but um, do Steve. Brother, Brother Steve, I bet you he'll come up with something to do yeah. with. To there you go. Do Steve. Do Steve. Steve. 
<laughs> okay, well, I'm going to second a lot of what everybody's already said, that it really depends on what we're talking about. Um, you know, have you ever heard the, the, the expression for me that comes to mind, uh, the school of hard knocks, that is the school of experience, usually through making bad decisions, learning from them. And then if you're smart or wise would be a better, uh, a better word for it, maybe both, uh, that then you'll choose a different path. Some people smash their head against the proverbial wall over and over again, not learning from that experience, still expecting a different result, which is the yep. definition of insanity. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, so our, our, like, what are we talking about when we're asking this question, you know, or, or uh, seeing if this statement is valid or not? Are we talking about learning to drive a car or drive, like, for example, for me, learn to drive a tractor trailer? Or are we talking about salvation? Are we talking about our walk with God? Because those are two very different uh, uh, clusters of, of things. Whereas, obviously, uh, th- there's there's not much in the Bible and from the Holy Spirit about how to drive a tractor trailer. <laughs> Not much, Steve. Not much. Not much. You know, may, maybe patience. <laughs> you yeah. know, and 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 love towards everyone else. You know that 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 certainly can be helpful when driving in uh, six o'clock rush hour traffic around Washington D.C. There's there's that verse in uh, in, in uh, yeah. Book of Thomas of stay in your own lane. <laughs> 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 I, I don't know nothing about that, but uh, that was not a joke because he didn't say it was a joke. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's well, right. it was funny. So anyway, uh, yeah, I totally <laughs> lost my train of thought. And you know what happens <laughs> when that happens? Ramble um, on, ramble on. I, I think right? you made. I already so, think you made some profound points, Steve. Yeah. So like with, okay, I was, I know where I was. Um, So there's life experience when it just comes to life issues, life stuff. And yes, I would say in general, uh, the Bible and the Holy Spirit can help guide you in that. And that would be whether or not you're saved. Um, But as far as salvation comes, yes, learning about God and learning about the gospel and all that is great. But uh, personally, I don't think you can experience the fullness of God's uh, in. You can't experience the indwelt spirit without having the indwelt spirit. So in that sense, until you experience it, you can't experience it. So that experience is the best experience. Um, and yeah, it, believe the gospel and experience it, mm-hmm. but that, that, that can be taught through experience, through reading the word, or through the preaching of the gospel, etc. cetera. But, and, you know, until you're there, then you can use experience in, you know, yes, making bad choices makes me feel feel bad. I grieve the Holy Spirit. And you can tie that in with the scriptures and learning of God through the help of the Holy Spirit as you're saved and walking with him, or perhaps not walking with him. That's another experience that can teach you, you know, to not walk that way. But uh, yeah, it's a very complicated question when you add in all the possibilities with that statement. Mm-hmm. All right. Very good. Uh, I think you made some very good points there. And uh, only one left uh, is Ben. Okay. I I think I I think I put leading fault, but it, it, it could be, really you could almost answer I could answer all of the above. Yeah. Um. And I think all you guys said it well, very well. And I would just reinforce what you said. Um. Because I, I think as an unsafe person, experience probably is the best teacher because you do hear a lot of different 
competing voices that say different things. Your father may tell you one thing and an, an expert in a certain field might tell you another thing. So you just get a lot of different opinions of voices. And so experience kind of uh, figures out, you know, determines who's, who knows what they're talking about and who doesn't. Um, but um, ultimately, well, for a believer, I don't believe it's the best experience or best teacher. I believe the Holy Spirit is. And experience is 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 a secondary. It's still a good teacher, but it's secondary to the Holy Spirit because the experience only reinforces the truthfulness of, of what the Holy Spirit says. Um, Amen. Yeah, it, it, like I, I think this is a kind of a crude example, but it it it, it resonates with me. Um, like when I was a kid, I, I would see you know uh, certain females that I was interested in, um, and uh, you know I, I didn't have I had a lot more going for myself than uh, some the people that they were interested in, for example. And I never understood that, you know, it's like, why, why, why the person that she's interested in is obviously going to be in a place, in a place that's not any good in a couple of years. Um, you know, all, all, by all human standards, he, he's kind of a loser. <laughs> and, um, but it wasn't just even me. It was just like other, I always saw girls, uh, that would go after, uh, the, um, the bad guy, you know, um, the rebel and the person didn't have anything going for himself. And I always thought that was really strange. And but now again, that experience, uh, I, I never could explain it. Or, or people that would hate me, or or hate other people, you know, and have a supernatural hate for people. Never understood why. Um, but then again, sort of reading the Bible, uh, it re reinforced uh, all those uh, experiences I had before, and even now today, it, it reinforces what the Bible says. So there's things I read the Bible I know are true, but uh, for them to become um, experientially um, true for me, uh, I do have to experience it. So I, you know, I think we all do, we all, uh, stumble periodically and have to learn those hard truths, uh, of what the Bible says. There is no flirting with sin or, or whatever it may be. Um, and also too, is that again, the Bible has to be the best teacher because there are things that we couldn't otherwise know through experience. Supernatural realities are not, uh, readily apparent through, uh, just experience. Um, uh, there's, there's a whole, supernatural world that's teeming around us that we wouldn't even know about had we not uh did, had we not god's revelation on the, on those matters so um again just just backing up everything you guys said i thought those were really great answers awesome all right thank you um well of course everybody gets a, a chance to do a follow-up uh and a second answer here before we go on but uh, my my answer is based upon a conversation I had with my son when he was about, I'd say he was 20 years old. And um, it, I'm very proud of my son. He just, I don't want to spend much time bragging about it right now, but I'm just, he's, he's fantastic. He's 40 years old now, but when he was about 20, um, he was a very good student, but learning to be on his own and financially we all make mistakes when we're starting to deal with finances and he got himself into a little bit of financial trouble and he's making some mistakes and and uh, I'm trying to teach him and eventually right after this by the way he agreed to let me get teach him and then some of his friends and some of my family they all started coming over to so I could teach them a course called um, uh, you know, financial planning, how to, how to make set goals and plan for your, your future. So um, since then, I need that course. <laughs> what's that? What's that? We, I think we all need that course. Any oh, of us yeah, that were uh, raised, born in the eighties or beyond, we never learned anything like that. As yeah, but I, I, uh, I was 50, you know, about almost 50 and I didn't really learn my lessons and wasn't qualified to even say anything about it until I was around 50. But, uh, so you're right, Angel, it is, it's a, it's a national problem. Uh, people not learning how to even establish a budget, live on a budget, do some financial planning for their future. So I'm trying to teach my son all this, but his initial argument was, okay, he made a mistake, but he says, and I, he says, but experience is the best teacher. And I thought, no, Experience is not the best teacher. Experience is the harshest teacher. What, like what Steve said about the school of hard knocks. Uh, we know that that's what you know. experience is and life is. And you go through the school of hard knocks and you, you learn and you, you learn your lessons well because you're, you, pay, you pay dearly for your mistakes. But it's not the best way 
to learn, I don't think. I think the best teacher is learning from other people's experience. Wow. Uh, like, uh, why, why not? If I've already, if I've got 20 or 30 years head start on you, and I've already been through all the things that you're about to de have to deal, start dealing with in life, and I've learned and I've succeeded because of my experiences, I learned the hard way. I went through that school of hard knocks. Why do you have to go through it? Why can't you benefit from all my experiences and let me tell you, you know, what I've learned? So that's what I was trying to convey to my son. That's exactly what I was saying with my answer about how we didn't take God's word in the garden. Take his word for it, you know, that he, that he knew better. You're right. You, you can't, we, we don't, we don't. That's why it's natural. We just don't want to do that for some reason. Yeah. So um, I, I think that uh, in a way, experience is the best teacher, but not your own experience. Learn from other people's experiences. Um, and and the, even in the in the Bible, what would what would we get from the Bible regarding this kind of a thing? I, uh, the the book of Proverbs is where you go if you want to learn wisdom. And uh, there are there are several verses talking about uh, being receiving counsel. One of them. Um, I can't find it in the KJV. So in a modern translation, it says something like, a wise man has many counselors. And uh, in, in, in other words, and that's what I, I've tried to do, and, I, and I've, many of you, you've, you've witnessed it, because I quite often ask others on the panel and other people in the church, give me your feedback on this. Help me to, uh, to figure out a, a solution. Instead of trying to figure it out on my own, I want to get counsel from as many wise people as I can. So uh, that's why I would say that uh, uh, I answered it certainly false, um, that uh, experience is not the best teacher. It's a difficult way to learn. Uh, it is a smarter way to learn, and that's getting counsel from people who've already made the mistakes. Wow. Uh, all right, so Crips, now I said maybe you'd uh, have an undecided answer you would change uh, after you heard all the answers. So would you like to reply further? Sure. I, well, first of all, I loved your answer, uh, and I, I, it just really rings true to me, uh, honestly, because I was thinking about myself when I answered, because I have been through uh, a lot of hard stuff uh, more in my uh, 20s and early 30s than, than lately, uh, as far as the kind of things I'm referring to, which were uh, a lot of times poor decisions and, and, uh, and sometimes repetitive behavior at first. And that all ended in my early 30s. And, and, and uh, praise God, I, I, I didn't uh, continue uh, in that. Uh, uh, God really changed me, honestly. Uh, and I give him all the credit for it. It's, it's not because I'm a great person. It's because he is a great God. Um, but I, I, uh, I, I want to change my answer uh, after hearing uh, everyone, but particularly Brother Luke. Um, I would agree that it's a harsh uh, teacher. Experience is a harsh teacher. Um, so I would, I would also have to change to certainly false based on uh, what Brother Luke said, honestly. All right, thank you. And I see that Sister Lisa found the verse that I was thinking about. It's, um, thank you, sister. It's Proverbs 24, 6. For by wise counsel, thou shalt make thy war, and in multitude of counselors, there is safety. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it's not, maybe not exactly the, the phrase that I was looking for, but the point's the same. Uh, uh, a multitude of counselors. Having many counselors is a wise thing to, to do. Consult many people. Uh, all right. Who would like to say more about this? Uh, if, any more on this one before we move on? I think we collectively nailed it. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Collectively, that's a very good point. That goes right along with the conclusion, I think. Yeah. yeah. That was a really good one. Yeah. All right. Let's go to question. Uh, to, uh, True false statement number two, Ben. Okay, the next question is true true or false? Saints can experience God's wrath. Ooh. I'll go first. I'd like to know who submitted it though first. Okay. Oh, that was mine. That, that was mine. Okay, so Ben, you are you are relegated to last. Okay. Are we skipping the other two? Uh, we've got to go going a lot of order. Um, yeah, sorry yeah. about that. Yeah, I, we don't have a particular order. I'm just trying to make sure everybody gets a turn. But uh, uh, so uh, 
uh, Ben's going to go last because he submitted the question. And Steve, since you're eager, go, why don't you go first? Okay. I meant the, the actual true false <laughs> statements in the chat. Not the order or of us. Oh, do but, you mean the results? Okay. Yeah, that's a good point because uh, we normally do look at the results that came in on the pie chart. How did that turn out, Ben? Okay, uh, it turned out. Um, actually, I want to read the re responses too. So thank you. Um, so five said leaning true. Okay, I, I start to say uh, for ex with regards to experience as the best teacher. Zero said certainly true. Five said leaning true. Four said undecided. One said leading false. I think that was mine. And then uh, four said certainly false. And then as for comments, let me go through those real quick. There's just two of them. Um, someone says the Holy Spirit experience is the best teacher. Another person says it depends on what we're talking about. I think we all uh, touched on those points. All right. All right, then, I guess uh, if there's anything else, uh, Steve, did you have something else in mind as far as uh, replying to that original question? Is that it? The original question? The yeah, first the, one? The, fir the first one, is there something else you need to, need to say about before we go to question number two? No, I think I agree with Ben. We collectively nailed it. Okay. All right, great. All right, so now the next question, uh, what was it again, Ben? Saints can experience God's wrath. Saints cannot experience God's can, wrath. Can, can, can. Oh, saints can experience God's wrath. All right, uh, who's eager to go? I, I'm still eager. Go ahead. Uh, certainly false. Uh, this is an important thing to understand. Um, uh, I, I believe that his wrath is for the disobedient and the wicked and evil, and, and we're not considered that once we uh, accept uh, salvation, once we're, once we're saved and sealed. Uh, we'll, we won't ever experience his uh, wrath. Um, we will experience, uh, if you're talking about end time stuff, uh, if there are any believers here on the earth, they will experience Satan's wrath, He'll be very angry and knows that he has a short time to, to do things and to wear the saints out, etc. Uh, but no, a uh, believer won't experience God's wrath. Now, we will experience God's chastisement. If you're a believer, a child of his that's disobedient, uh, the Bible's very clear. He will chastise those he loves. And uh, I would also say that if you know you're being chastised, uh, it's a good way to know that uh, the your heavenly father is doing that out of love for you. Uh, at least in my experience, I, that's the way I feel about uh, uh, chastisement from him. Sometimes it's not even chastisement. Sometimes it's just consequences of my own actions. Um, I think we had a question a couple of weeks ago. I, they all run together. I don't know how long ago it was, but it was, it was, uh, is there a difference between chastisement or consequences or something like that? I probably have it wrong. Um, but I think there is. Sometimes it's not even God chastising you. Sometimes you're just paying the consequences uh, for choices that you make. But then uh, his chastisement, to me, feels very different. It feels like there's a purpose for it, and usually there's something uh, uh, to learn from it as well. But um, in answer to the question, uh, uh, I think certainly certainly false. It's, it's phrased, we will experience God's wrath. Is that correct, Ben? We can, saints can, we can. God's thank name. you thank you sir uh certainly false all right thank you uh and the sister angel sorry there um you know what i'm gonna say uh, i'm gonna say uh, certainly false certainly false um i you know uh i'm still interested in hearing more uh, I, you know because i get sometimes i get uh a little confused on the, the definition of wrath, like, like, like if that specifically only applies to, um, you know, uh, I guess, I guess what you would say, like, like a, a lack of mercy, like, like, a, like, a, like, a, like a, you know, when God, when, when you've basically worn out all your other, you know, options, you've rejected God. And this is the, this is the end result essentially, um, uh, Whereas I feel like we're always in a state of we're always in a state of grace and mercy, and there's always there's always a way out for us, even 
even as uh, even you know honestly even with the loss until until it's too late until they draw their last breath uh, as unbelievers. So, um, but I but I, I so I, I think it's uh, I think it's certainly false. But I uh, to be honest, um, I haven't actually really thought about that a whole lot in terms of uh, outside of the, the the eschatological sense. I haven't really thought about whether or not that applies. Um, you know, in uh, day-to-day life in some way. So um, I, I could stand correct on that question. Okay, what about the eschatological sense here? How do you guess it apply then? No, I, I don't believe, I don't believe we would. <laughs> we, we, we will be, we will suffer God's wrath uh, in the eschatological sense. No, not, not, not God's wrath uh, at all. Um, you know, uh, one way or the other, you know, we would be, <clears throat> we would not be uh, subject to that. Right. All right, very good. Sister Lisa? You're doing fine, Angel. Thank you. Thank you. My, yeah. my, 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 my voice is going now. <laughs> oh, you're all right. Hmm. Okay. All right, Sister Lisa? I answered uh, certainly false. Uh, as long as the person really is a saint of God, there's a whole lot of folks that think they saints that ain't. But <laughs> Say that again. Uh, there's a whole lot of folks that think they're saints, but they're ain't. Oh, saints, but they ain't. I got you. Okay. I like it. You know, not according to the scripture. That's a good did, one. Did you say they're not saints, they're ain'ts? They're ain'ts. Oh, that's good. That's saying. good. Good saying. I like it. You think they're brothers, but they others, you know. Woo-hoo. So <laughs> uh, uh, let's see how the Bible defines where what the wrath is for. Uh, Romans 1.18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. Ooh. Okay. Uh, Proverbs 11.4, riches do not profit in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. And I think we all understand that we have to have the righteousness of Christ, but that's the only righteousness. The Bible, when the Bible is speaking of righteousness, it's talking about his righteousness, not our own, unless it's being very specific based on the context. And mm-hmm. those passages are rare. And then Psalm 2:12, kiss the son lest he be angry and you perish in the way. For his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take refuge in him. And then we have Ephesians 5, 6. Let no man deceive you with empty words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Romans 2, 5. But because of your heart and impenitent heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath when God's righteous judgment will be revealed. Revelation 14, 10 through 11. He also will drink the wine of God's wrath poured full strength into the cup of his anger and he will be tormented with fire and sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb and the smoke of their torment goes up forever and ever and they have no rest day or night these worshipers of the beast in his image and whoever receives the mark of his name and then i think the last one here is john three thirty six: whosoever believes in the son has eternal life whoever does not obey uh i don't know why it says obey here this must not be kjv that i'm reading from because it's a website sorry about that the sun shall not see light but the wrath of god abideth in him i said i remember that it's john 3 36 says he that believeth the son has everlasting life he that believeth not the son shall not see light but the wrath of god abideth on him that's the way the kjv quotes it so um these scriptures, if you were to look further, whenever it's talking about wrath, like where it said the sons of disobedience. So you say, oh, my God, I disobeyed God yesterday. That's that's not what he's talking about. Now, it's not good to disobey God, but the disobedience is the rejection of Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, as I as I keep trying to point out, Christ is the fruit and those that bear witness to the fruit, to the truth of the fruit, that have the true gospel, that share the truth of his word, um, that is the fruit that one should be looking for from another saint of God, not whether or not they stumble and bumble with a sin 
th th that's not how you inspect the proper fruit. Now, that, that means that person might have a problem and they're overtaken in a fault and we may need to pray for them and encourage them and, and uh, help them if we can and, and lift them up in prayer. But that's not the same thing as somebody bearing rotten fruit, which would be the denial of Christ and some other weird twisted doctrine that blocks the truth and shuts up the kingdom to uh, other people who aren't even saved and then confuses the heaven out of the ones who are believers. That is a sign that they do not have the fruit of Christ. They do not bear his fruit. Mm. So that, that would be the example that I would give in, in this regard. And there's other things as well. But if you are a son of God, if you are in Christ, you are secure in him. And God has not appointed us to wrath. The mm -hmm. wrath is appointed to the unbeliever. Mm -hmm. That's All what right. I say. Okay, great. Thank you, sister. Amen. Amen. Uh, let me see. Now, I can't lost track of who went. Who, who wants to go next? Who has I, an answer? Do I ben, oh, is wait, it, my question. What is it, yeah, yeah, ben, sorry, yes. with your question, you have to go last. Yeah, uh, sorry. Who, who has an answer? Uh, uh, Steve, you have an answer, have you? No, I have not. <clears throat> go ahead. Okay. Uh, this will be my answer. First Thessalonians 5, 1 through 9. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. But ye brethren are not as are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are the ch ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober putting on the breastplate of faith and love and foreign helmet, the hope of salvation for God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. That well, I, is my answer. Yeah. I guess that settles it. Doesn't it? Doesn't that settle? Amen. it? Amen. Yeah. I mean, to me, if something is stated explicitly in the Bible, then that settles it. Uh, but uh, there's more to say, but I, I think that's really the right answer. Has everybody answered but uh, Ben and me? Am I forgetting one? Okay, uh, I'll go next, and then Ben can be the final answer. Uh, uh, I, I think there are a lot of good points made. I see that, uh, oh, first let me say Mark Corbett is asking for prayer from everybody. I don't know what you need, Mark, but everybody, please pray for for Mark Corbett uh, for the Lord to to help him whatever with whatever he needs. Uh, and I did see a comment by uh, uh, oh yeah, it was Kevin, and he said there's a difference between uh, tribulation and wrath. I think it was what he how he phrased it, and uh, that is true. But there's there's more to it in that there's all kinds of things that uh, apply to to us. Um, you've got uh, tribulation is one thing, but I believe that the church has always gone through tribulation from uh, uh, the very beginnings from Pentecost uh, uh, throughout all of the early church age, and even today we still have believers being. Uh, going through tribulations and another word that would apply is persecutions so we uh the, these are things that do happen to believers persecuted uh tribulations and trials um now what does the lord do though to the to the believer uh we know that he will chastise us but i don't think chastisement is the same as i i used to i i used to think of chastisement as the way that occasionally I'd have to uh, spank my son. Actually, I've only had to 
spank him once. But uh, uh, I don't think that God chastising should be compared to that uh, because I don't think he's using any kind of like, he's not punishing us. I think of him as the good shepherd. He has a staff. And it says, uh, the, the, uh, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. But the staff is used to steer us. I don't see that the, the shepherd is using the staff to beat the sheep the way that some of us think is ch that's chastisement. We got to get a, a spanking. I think what he does is he's using the staff to steer the sheep one direction or another. You get off track. You need to be redirected. So I'm going to help push you over, over this way. Uh, so chastisement does happen to the church. Uh, wrath uh, is from God is never for the church, as the scriptures uh, clearly states. Uh, tribulation and uh, persecution are for the church. Uh, and then there's one last, and that's reaping. Uh, the, the, the principle of reaping and sowing, that happens to everybody. Believers and non-believers are under this. Uh, generally speaking, you're going to reap what you sow. So you're going to have some consequences. That's why even as believers, um, if we, we commit a sin, guess what? Sin comes with its own consequences. No one is going to get away with their sins. And I'm not talking about a believer having to pay for their sins in hell. I'm talking about in this life, we will pay for those sins. You go, you're sexually promiscuous or you're committing adultery. Guess what? You're going to get sexually transmitted diseases. You get unplanned pregnancies, divorces, families broken up. All kinds of bad things come as a result from various sins. So um, that's that's uh, uh, reaping and, and sowing. Uh, all right, uh, Ben, you you asked the question. Um. Yeah, um, you be, might be surprised, actually. I was actually surprised myself when I found that myself answering uh, leaning false. And let me explain why. <clears throat> um, let me see here. Um, well, I, I should say right off the bat, again, um, I don't ever rely on my own personal opinion or, or experience. I go strictly on the precepts of Scripture. And Scripture clearly says that, uh, tells us exactly what brings about God's wrath. And that is the law brings about wrath. So violation of the law brings about God's wrath. Um, and I think God's wrath has both as a, a, a for unbelievers is both temporal and eternal if they if it's not remedied by uh, by believing on Christ. And I think that's what Romans uh, 1 is saying about the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. And he, then he goes about and lists all those sins, and we all guilty of those things. And I believe that it, what he's saying there is that uh, whenever you see someone in, in one of those sins, an unbeliever, you're, you're seeing... You might say, wow, why would anyone do such a thing? Um, or what, what a perversion. <clears throat> well, I think you're seeing God's God's a, almost like a abandonment of people who will reject him. So if, as long as someone's rejecting him, he could, because you reject him, you don't approve of, of him. Uh, and that's what reprobate means. It means disapproved. So if you don't reprove, reprove of, approve of him in his ways, well, then you're automatically going to, um, by, by definition, you're going to approve of the ways he doesn't approve of. And that's uh, that's what reprobate means. So it gives him over to a reprobate mind. It just means that uh, while you're rejecting the truth that's revealed, um, you're, it, as you reject that truth, it's it's manifested or revealed from heaven through uh, perverse behavior and just things that are not, as the Bible says, convenient. I mean, there, it, it it makes it, men invent new ways to sin, and it, it's just like it's like uh, again, they, 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 they because they don't reject God, they, they they're totally given over to it. Doesn't mean they're a lost cause and they can never come around. It just means that while you're seeing those behaviors, you're seeing a manifestation manifestation of God's wrath here and now, um, and that if it's not remedied, yes, it will lead to condemnation uh, in hell. But um, Again, the the law brings about uh, brings about wrath, and um, and you guys quoted no, a number of scriptures that say clearly that uh, believers are are not under wrath. Absolutely, we're not under wrath at all. We're under his chastisement, like you mentioned. Um, and uh, again, this may sound, but the reason I said, answered leaning false is that I I believe we can experience God's wrath. But we're not believers are not the object of God's wrath, but we can experience it. And let me explain. Um, so again, I, I'm I'm absolutely convinced. I mean, there, there's a lot of people uh, will read their Bible, say, "Oh, that must be talking about an unbeliever," because a, a believer would never do that. A, a believer would never go back to the law and crucify 
crucify Christ again. They would never take the mark of the beast. They would never go back to their uh, vomit and eat it up again. Well, again, I, I the, if you again that you're, I think you're leaning you're leaning on your own understanding. You're not leaning on the understanding that God gives you, and that understanding is in the Word of God. If you read it carefully, I'm absolutely convinced uh, that Hebrews is a, is, a, is a warning to believers that they could fall back, and if they do, they could. Um, they could experience God's, um, uh, what I forgot the term now. Um, uh, uh, they could experience the, the fire, they could experience temporarily the fire that devours the adversaries because the adversaries are the unbelieving Jews. But if they go back to them, they could be caught up in that wrath. And I believe personally, I believe that's it, it's 80 70, it, it has 80 70 in view. Um, also, too, so Second Peter talks about um, these believers going back to their vomit essentially. And again, I think I could prove, prove without a shadow of a doubt. I'm fully convinced in my own mind. Again, not leading on man's understanding, leading on the understanding that God gives you, uh, that he provides his word. If you just read it plainly, it's clear that uh, unbelievers, or I'm sorry, believers can, can, can be duped by false teachers. And just like you said, Luke, uh, if they get caught up in that sin, uh, uh, venereal diseases, other diseases, they can they can be caught up in it. Not that 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 was targeted for them, but they can be caught up in it because they refuse to come out of it. Uh, another example would be uh, Revelation, where it talks about my people come out of her, my people come out of her, unless you share of her plagues and partake of her sins. So if the if believers fail to take that warning quite naturally they're going to be uh in in the midst of the plagues uh that that are not it, uh, meant for them but they 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 uh can experience it uh, you know uh, in in that sense um also too again the mark of the beast uh it says the whoever takes the mark of the beast will be will receive the full wrath of god again wrath comes by law a lot of people say oh the mark of the beast that's not a law uh, oh, it clearly is because it's it, it's the full you receive the full wrath of God's uh, uh, you feel the full cup of God's wrath but again that's that is a law in fact it's announced by an angel angels are involved involved in that uh, matter again uh, I think we need to often take our own understanding out of it and lean on strictly what God says uh, again I, I I seriously doubt uh, believers will take the mark of these at that time uh, but I'm just saying uh, is it, it, it again? It's a law, and, and believers are not under the law whatsoever. Our flesh has already died. Who cares if put, someone puts? Up, I take that back. It's a mark, and our flesh is already dead. I mean, it, it doesn't it doesn't count for anything. It can't be held against us. We've been circumcised of our flesh. Uh, again, these are leaning on God's understanding, not our own. Um, so yes, I definitely believe pe believers are not appointed to God's wrath. It's not the object, but in this lifetime, we could be caught up in it even though it's not uh, directed, uh, we're not the intended object of it, but we can be, uh, you know, we, we can be in it and experience it in that, in that sense. That's my answer. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, does anybody want to say more about this one? Yes. yes. <laughs> All right. Well, it's Steve and uh, sister Lisa and, and we go with the cistern first. Yeah. Ladies first. Okay, thank you very much. I had a question for Ben for a clarification. Ben, are you saying that you believe that believers could take the mark and then um, are you nullifying the scripture that says that anyone that has it is going to be cast into the lake of fire? Well, the script, again, the scripture says same, the same thing. I don't believe believers will. No, I do not believe that they will. But they, they are never in danger of being condemned for doing it because if they believed, they're not under the law and the taking the mark is a law. That's what I'm trying to say. And um, for the, the scripture also say plainly, without exception, anyone who looks upon a woman has committed adultery and all adulteries will have their part, uh, uh, will be condemned by the law. So uh, it, again, I, it, it's it's talking about people that are, are not saved. Um, good point. And so that i i know it's hard to wrap your mind around i i've struggled with it myself but again i'm not leaning on my own understanding i'm look, leaning strictly on what the scripture says and it says the bible clearly says if no it, with no ifs ands or buts if you know if you if you commit a sin you're going to hell and uh you know in our mind one sin seems worse than another but that's our understanding uh god's understanding uncleanness is uncleanness and um again we need that's why we need to be washed again uh and, and born again 
So we don't have any record of sin on us whatsoever. So no, I, I, I'm not saying, I know people think this is controversial and it's often misunderstood what I'm saying. I don't believe believers will, but is it, it again, it's, it, that's my opinion. That's, you know, that's my opinion. It, it, the scripture um, says clearly, yes, anyone who does will experience um, the full wrath, but that is a law because only the law brings about wrath and we're not under the law. We're, un, we're dead. We're dead to sin. I, we're dead to sin. We're alive to God. We're, we're dead to the law. And so I think, again, uh, I think I, I think that radical understanding, and I, I think that's a radical understanding that the, that the scripture teaches will really is super empowering and understanding to allow me to grasp fully that we're not under the law whatsoever. And there's nothing ever that could ever that we could do or not fail to do that would ever condemn us to hell. We die no more because we're in Christ. I, I see what you're saying too, because there's no, I can't think of a way it's ever differentiated. Like the, the absolute, like, if you do this, then this will happen statement of taking the mark. It's really, I've not seen any, there's not really a difference for any other, any other warning about the consequence of sin in the rest of scripture. You see what I'm saying? So I don't really see like anywhere where the Bible single side out, but you know, like basically saying even believers, even believers, if you take the mark, you'll go to hell. You know what I mean? Like, I don't see an example of that. So I see what you're saying. Oh, I, don't, I don't really know. I'm else. sorry. May I interject? Please? Go on. Yeah. Yes. Please. In Revelation 14, 9 to 11, it says, and the third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast mm -hmm. and his image and receive his mark in his hand, excuse me, in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb and the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. So my, my the worship answer, part too. That's different. Well, my answer would be uh, God. He, Jesus also said, whosoever believes in me sh has, shall not come to condemnation, but has eternal life. So there's both, there, the, both those statements there are universal. They're like whosoever, whoever believes in me has eternal life. You not come to condemnation. And the other statement says, uh, whoever takes the mark of the beast will, will experience God's wrath. Well, what one wins? Well, I know what one wins. Mercy. Well, over I the have an answer for that. Most people don't believe in the rapture would have an issue with that. But if we're not here, you can't take it. Right. And the people who are left behind. I know people don't want to uh, uh, believe this, but it's true. Now, personally, I believe they will be preserved, meaning they will have the fortitude unto death to resist the beast if they are truly born again. Now, I can't know for sure. I'm not experiencing that. I don't know. But just from what I'm gleaning from the scripture. So if if the church is not here, and I know she won't be, then the only ones who are left behind, believe it or not, there will be a time on this earth that there isn't one saint of God. But it won't last too long because all of the people who were around us that thought we were crazy or wouldn't listen and family that we pleaded with and the whole nine, they're going to fall on their knees and they're going to repent, which is they're going to believe on Jesus. They're going to say they were right and I was wrong and they will become believers. And again, the fruit is Christ. So if the fruit is Christ, then they're, even though they're going to have a heavier cross to bear unto death for sure, or uh, they have to either hide According to the Bible, they either have to go into the wilderness, they have to hide from the beast, or they have to face the beast and then maybe unto death. And if it, and it, if, it, if they are believers, I believe they will face him unto death. But any man that takes that mark or worships the image or takes the number of his name, according to the Bible, they're going to get cast into the lake of fire. So either they were never saved or... God is contradicting himself, which he cannot do. So he's either going to preserve them during the great tribulation because they are believers. And when I say preserve, I don't mean that they won't die. 
many of them are going to die. But and this is why we've been pleading with people, hey, you know, believe on Jesus, because what's coming is not a good thing. Wrath is about to be poured out and it's already it's really started. A lot of this stuff that they're explaining away and saying it's climate change and all. No, it is the judgment of God on Babylon. What I think America is Babylon, Tyre and Zidon, Egypt, Sodom, Gomorrah and unrepented Nineveh all rolled into one. And it's already started, which is called the beginning of sorrows. And it's not just happening here. It's happening in other places in the world. But you got to understand, when you look at this Bible, we are in the belly of the beast, literally. So th this is, again, what I'm able to glean from the scripture. And I love you, Brother Ben, I do. But I would have to disagree with you on that, with the exception, which I don't have a problem with anything you said. I understand why you're saying it. But the Bible is clear on that. So if it there would have to be either a removal of the church or there's a contradiction. Because he can't say you you can take the mark because you're a believer and you're not appointed to wrath is, is what you're saying. And even mm. though that's that's the law of man. But the Bible is clear. He said to anyone who did. So then this is why I believe the church is clearly already by this Revelation chapter four, verse one. Read for yourself. We're already gone. So we can't take the mark. Well, but there will be a different, in my opinion, a different um, rule, if you were, where there is there is going to be one law that they cannot break. And that would be they cannot take that mark. But anyway, I'll, I'll be quiet now. Thank you. Right. I'd like to give you my two cents. Uh, when I... Uh, first heard Ben uh, state this uh, viewpoint recently. Uh, it was out of the blue. It just surprised me. We've never discussed it. And I, But the way he explained it made me uh, think I, I like to uh, hear things that are, uh, let's say, are different than my conclusion because I, maybe I'm wrong. I, I could be wrong about anything except for who Jesus is and how do you get saved. That's just so clear in the scriptures that there's no dispute in that. But almost everything else in the Bible, I, I consider that maybe I'm wrong because I've been wrong in the past. So uh, I, I want to hear it. You know, any, uh, even if it's strange and different and unorthodox, uh, I, I, I'm curious. I want to know. Uh, but the way that I uh, heard him explain it uh, the first time, uh, a, a few weeks ago, uh, it made a lot of sense to me because there are verses that um, uh, Paul stated and also Jesus stated where they give you a laundry list of sins. Uh, you know, all uh, homosexuals and, and fornicators and liars and on and on will have their place in the lake of fire. Paul, sit, Paul has his list. Jesus has his list. And, and then so the Lord Chief Heretic says, see? You you you, you got to get sin in your life. You can't. You got to stop lying and fornicating, and doing all these things. Well, how do we answer that? I, I my answer to them on those verses is that's true. That that everybody's lost because everybody's guilty of something. That's why we need Jesus. We're all going to have our place in the lake of fire. That's why we need Jesus. And I I could take that same answer and rationale to the mark of the beast too, and say that yeah. You, if you get the mark of the beast, you got your place in the lake in the fire. That's why they need Jesus. But I'm not taking sides on this. I'm just saying I'm uh, I'm just thinking about of all the different possibilities. And um, but that's how I think it does make sense. Uh, what I would caution everybody to do. Now I know that there's a lot of us here that study um, the Book of Revelation and eschatology um, a lot. Um, I, I probably studied as much as most everybody here. Uh, but the more I've studied, the more I've come to the conclusion that I'm quite undecided about a lot of eschatology uh, because I've listened to the, the biggest authorities of the preterists, the, the, the futurists, the historicists. And, and uh, so uh, considering all the, that each one has their scholars and they all have intelligent, reasonable answers, and yet they take completely contradictory uh, conclusions on uh, uh, Revelation. 
Uh, and since the book of Revelation is written in what's called apocryphal writing, it means that it's written to in, purposely to be uh, mysterious and not under, easily understood, using a lot of symbolism, uh, then I, I personally don't want to form doctrine from, from uh, the book of Revelation. I'm going to, my doc, and I, I feel the same way about the proverb, uh, not proverbs, the, the parables. Jesus has purposely made those parables to confuse people, and you're not you're supposed to uh, uh, necessarily under, understand it all. I don't think I understand all of the parables. Uh, some are, I'm pretty confident, but there's many I feel I'm quite unsure, uh, even though I've listened to a lot of different explanations. So I, I would just say that it's probably best for us to keep our hardcore conclusions and doctrines on the verses that are uh, not apocryphal writing and that are not written in a way that's mysterious. Uh, Steve, you want to say something? Yes. <clears throat> Romans 8.34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor de that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's Amen. my response. Are we saying that something that Satan makes? I mean, I understand the peril in that scripture of not taking of, of, of to someone that takes the mark. And yes, I agree. I do not personally believe anyone will take the mark because of that scripture. That it, what it says, but hypothetically, just like we've said with any other sin is a violation of God's law and, and without the shed blood of Christ and his risen body physically from the grave, we all deserve hell just as much as anyone else, including those that would take the mark, worship the beast, etc. So I understand what Ben is saying. And if we say that hypothetically, if someone was to take the mark, they go to hell, even if they already believed, that goes against everything we as gospel, fun, that, that, that we as grace preaching gospel believers stand for. So I'm just saying, you know, you know that not this, but that those verses flat out conclude nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. And when Paul wrote that, he said things to come, which would include the mark. So, again, I don't believe any believer will take it. However, if, if a believer did, hypothetically, I believe God's grace trumps over it, just like he said, we've already been circumcised from our flesh. Anything done to our flesh only affects our flesh, and it would be the flesh that the wrath of God is poured out upon. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I, I think we've got some really interesting uh, answers to this. Uh, uh, it's not such a cut and dry thing that that uh, uh, that we would think. Uh, it's my opinion, but uh, I'm not going to promote it personally. I, I don't think there's any reason to be promoting that, but. Uh, uh, ben's not the first person. Um, Bible Jim, uh, I was editing one of the books that he wrote, and he uh, he had a chapter on this. And I cautioned him. I said, don't put this in your book. You realize that 
what's going to happen if you um, put that idea out there. And uh, I can't remember if he ended up including it in the book or not. But so I have heard others say this, though. Uh, but before we go on uh, and get hear any more on this or the next question, I want to say to uh, everybody, please, everybody, pray for Victoria. If you haven't noticed, she's back in the in the chat room there. So everybody, welcome her back, and let's oh, pray hey, for her. She, she has some health problems and some other things she's dealing with. So everybody, please pray for her. And also to MG, he he must have got here late because he asked me what's on my shirt. So I'll just say right here. It says, uh, "Can you see that heavy drinker?" And then it says the Bible verse. What does it say? I can't read it. Can anybody, can anybody read that? John 7, 37. Yeah, so on the back of the shirt. Can you, can you read it? If right. Am I in the right position? You get down, it down and upright. Shoulders back. Talk, huh? Luke. Say something, Luke. Okay, I'm here. Can you hear it? Can you see it now? All right, yeah. down with your shoulders back. If any man, if any man uh, thirst, go on, Ben. Then you can freeze the screen on my, on my right, it, Yeah. Oh, you're yeah, right. Sorry. I, uh, on me. Yeah. Yeah. One second. One second. If yeah, if you okay. read it, then he'll go away. If any man thirst, let him come to me and drink. Jesus. Okay. All right. So uh, Ben, we talked about. I mean, uh, MG, we talked about this when we first started tonight, and, and uh, this is. Uh, I, I said. Uh, Let's us drink uh, this living water. Let's get high on the most high. Thanks for asking, MG. Uh, all, all right. Now, uh, does anybody want to say more on this question before we go uh, Oh, well, I just want to say one thing. Like, obviously, it, be, because it's a hypothetical and it, it almost paradoxical, um, I think the main value in, in, uh, in pointing this out is to show the profound uh, covering we have with the blood yes. of Jesus. So obviously the, the mark of the beast is not just going to be something that you, you can't, you know, it's not just going to be like a, a, a sticker you get or something. It's going to be, there's an element of worship to it. Right. Yep. And so um, there's more than one reason why that we can't imagine, like why a believer, you know, won't take the mark. But the point is, is that we're if, the covering that we have with the blood of Jesus covers all things just like just like uh steve just pointed out past and present and future that yeah. nothing can separate us from the love of god and that is a more important um uh, uh, uh statement to make than almost anything else if we're going to even do hypotheticals that's an important uh, 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 uh principle to drive home also that 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 law is law and grace is grace right so um, I think that I, I do th like I, like that's what I was trying to point out was what Luke ended up pointing out is that um, the same verses that are used to tell that, you know, that, that the Lord Shippers will use against us that say like all liars, all drunkards, all adulterers. Um, we, uh, we, we, we effortlessly retort, you know, we'll know that that's all the, of those who are lost and not in Christ. Um, it, it really does. Uh, I believe uh, that the same applies to the mark of the beast, but I think also that it will be a different situation because I don't believe that uh, I don't believe believers will end up taking the mark of the beast. But it's still important because uh, you, you could look at it either way. You could say that this might dangerously encourage people to take the mark. I don't think that will be the case because I think that you know believers are not going to do that, um, and I also think that. Uh, uh, it's, it, you could just, you could say, you could say the opposite. You could say that, um, that if you emphasize the hypothetical, in the hypothetical, that if you are a believer, you take the mark, you lose your salvation. That's just as dangerous more. So I would say that's a more dangerous proposition. So I do understand well, uh, where everyone's coming uh, on the subject, but, um, I think, I think it's a really great illustration, a really great way to illustrate just how absolute that covering is that, you know, uh, that, that we have as, uh, as born again believers uh, and, and who have been covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. So um, do, I don't yeah. think you're a heretic, Ben. <laughs> yeah. I, I, okay. Again, too, is that I know a lot of people like to take these things that I say and very dishonestly uh, say that I push these things or I promote these things and I'm not right. what I'm Funny, suggesting. They, they know, but they should know better because we don't promote sin just because we, we stand right. on eternal security. Right. right? Yeah. Right. Um, so again, I'm not promoting or pushing any of those things. I, what I'm saying is, let's 
let's push our understanding to the extreme. Let's let's push our, our doctrine to the extreme and really test it out. Let's see if, if there's any soft spots to it. And I've done just that. And I found that there, there is no soft spots. Uh, I'm not promoting anyone take the mark of the beast. Don't get me wrong. I don't think anyone will. But I'm just saying hypothetically, could could a believer do it and still be saved? Absolutely. Absolutely. Without a, a doubt in my mind. And if we're talking about paradoxes, uh, read Exodus 34, 5 through 7, where God clearly talks about forgiveness and long suffering and underneath it saying, but not clearing the guilty. The, the Bible is riddled with paradoxes, but but it doesn't become a paradox. We realize there's two species of men, saved and unsaved, those under grace, those under law. And read Revelation 22, where it talks about whoever desires to take the water freely, but right underneath it uh, invokes curses to people who would interfere uh, with God's word. It's again, it's a picture of tr mercy and grace triumphs over law or condemnation. So it, it, there's always statements in scripture say whoever believes has eternal life. There's also verses say whoever takes the mark of the beast is condemned. Well, which whoever are you? You're, you're either under one or two programs. And if you if you want to know which one wins, because there are obviously conflicts, that's a co clear contradiction. If you want to know which one wins, the Bible tells us which one wins. Mercy triumphs over condemnation. That's all I'm saying, period. And if you want more, go into that. I can, and I won't probably bring it up ever again, but uh, yeah. I think it's a helpful illustration to test our doctrine. I think uh, a lot of people are eager to, to move on now. I don't even remember what the original question was, uh, but... Oh, uh, it wasn't about the mark of the beast, I can tell you that. Yeah, okay. It uh, was, it, can can saints experience the wrath of God or oh, something yeah. like that? Yeah. Okay. That's how it. we, it's a natural yes, it's ending. Related. Because because the wrath of God being poured out upon all men in the end times, and we all certainly seem to feel, at least most of us, I think, on this panel, uh, if not all, believe that we are living in the end times, and it is a very important topic to discuss. And, you know, again, I would just reaffirm, don't take the mark. <laughs> And and I don't I really don't think God is going to allow a believer, whether we are raptured or not, to take the mark. I agree. I think it's a very dangerous thing to to test it. However, I could see, you know, someone's faith being tested in the form of, you know, somebody saying, you know, testing a believer and saying, okay. It, 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 whose God is stronger, yours or mine? Exactly. Yeah. So well, I, I, have... I, I still wouldn't take the mark. I would rather. I would rather die. Yeah. I than, think we all. Uh, we, we. I think we would all agree whether we believe in a pre-tribulation rapture or some other, the way it's going to play out. Uh, I think we'd all like it to be a pre-tribulation rapture. That's what we would like, and uh, let's hope it, that that is, is the case, and then we, we, this won't even be uh, an, an issue. Right. Um, all right. Can we uh, can we go on to the next question, Ben? Let's do it. Okay. True or false? This is not mine. I'm not sure who, who whose it is, but it uh, is true or false. The thief in John 10.10 10 is referring not to Satan, but false prophets and teachers. And Jesus even says, I came to give them life hence his love uh it's in chat if you want to i can read it again too though uh, i don't see it anywhere so you'll need to I oh i'm oh, sorry there it is there it is it was right okay. after experience is the best teacher in our list all right i see it here so uh brother chris uh, would you go first on this the thief well, go ahead. You can read it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I actually learned uh, uh, a lot just from this question. I have always uh, heard people teach this and refer to Satan as as the thief that comes to uh, kill, steal, and destroy. Um, but I read the, read the verse. This is one of the ones that I saw uh, looking at it briefly, and I thought it was interesting. And I, I of course, had to follow up by reading it. And uh, it, it is, in my opinion, referring to prophets and teachers, but yet people refer to Satan as this. But in, in the context of the verse, uh, uh, Jesus is talking about people that came before him uh, that, uh, that he's uh, talking to and referring to, not Satan. Uh, but yet 
gosh, how many times have I heard a pastor refer to Satan as, what, what does Satan do? He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. I think that's true, but uh, I do believe in the verse uh, Jesus is talking about uh, false teachers and prophets. So uh, certainly true. The thief referring uh, not to Satan, but false prophets and teachers, certainly true. Okay. All right. Thank you. How about uh, Sister uh, Lisa? Would you go next? Sorry, I was trying to find the question. I didn't see it here in the chat to uh, answer it. I'm missing a link somewhere. Um, you want me to read it for you? Yeah. Okay. It is the thief in John 10, 10 is referring not to Satan, but false prophets and teachers. And Jesus even, even says, I came to give them quote unquote life, hence his love. So in other words, uh, the John 10 is not referring to Satan, but it's actually got, uh, Jesus is referring to those, those teachers who are, false prophets in Israel's past and currently uh, opposing him. And he even says to them, I, get, I came to give them life. It is a confusing question. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Well, I mean, agents of Satan are going to emulate their father. and They're still sure. basically under him. So I would, I guess I would say leaning... Leaning, wait, the way it's worded, <laughs> leaning false, I think it is, because, in you know, there are many different um, ways that Satan can manifest himself. Either he can even use Christians. So sure. where did that go? So I would say leaning. Yeah, the thief in John 10, 10 is referring not to Satan, but false. Well, it's not Satan specifically. I would say it's leaning, leaning true, but it's not entirely true because uh, it, it 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 can be all of those. It can be Satan, false prophets, teachers. They're just going to be represent representatives of him, no matter what other false names or whatever they're calling on. If it's not if it's not leading to the Lord Jesus Christ, it is a false way. And so the emissaries of the devil are always going to bring, you know, the fruits of the devil, which will be killing, stealing, and destroying. This is one way we can know they're emissaries of the devil. So um, my answer is leaning, leaning true, but it's, that's not entirely true. All right. I'll go next, and it won't take long, but I, I just – See, the thing is, when people ask us of, uh, questions that apply to a particular verse, and, and then, of course, if we're going to really uh, do this right, we, we really should read the whole chapter, everything surrounding it, and, and to get the context, because it's you can't really come to the right conclusion without doing that. Uh, but I just looked it up and to see if I could quickly uh, find anything in the context. And if we look at the first verse, uh, 10 verse 1, KJV says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Uh, so I think this is just talking about any person who is trying to get salvation some other way is the thief or a robber. And uh, I'll read it in the Amplified also. It says, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, he who does not enter by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up from some other place on the stone wall, that one is a thief and a robber. So I, I don't see anything about Satan. I think it's talking about the in, the believer, the, the, the person who's not a believer, but they're, they're trying to get to heaven, the world as a whole. They're trying to get there through establishing their own righteousness, uh, not, rely, not uh, receiving the righteousness of Christ. So I think that's uh, it's settled by the, the first verse uh, in the chapter. Um, All right. All right. Uh, Cripps, you want to go next? I already went. I went first. Oh, okay. That's I was right. just saying all right to your comment. All okay. right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Sister Lisa. 
I mean, uh, Sister Angel. Okay, so I've been looking at this, and um, I kind of it's kind of confusing because I'm looking at the way um, it was set up, right? And so um, we see in the in the uh, verses uh, prior to verse ten um, that uh, there's you know they, there's a lot of use of colons in these verses. Um, All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers colon but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door, colon, by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Now verse 10, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy, colon. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So I think it's both. Because in, the, in reality, what we're talking about is just um, man, right? We're talking about man either way. Now, either man acting in service of Satan, who is still subject to salvation, should he choose to believe on the Lord, um, or man in terms of, of sheep and potential sheep, right? So um, honestly, I, I don't see it as an either or um, because uh, the they or the them can can apply either way as long as we understand that we're talking about um, man himself. So whether or not man is acting as an agent of Satan, it's, that still doesn't disqualify him from the offer. Uh, so does does that make sense? So I understand the key word is 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 basically the crux of the question is them who's them referring to who is they referring to, and it's it's to both because uh, even an agent of Satan is a potential sheep. Right, uh, because that's who the offer is, is applying to. So as long as the you know, um, uh, the you know the, the, the answer is is you know, all of the above, right? So um, I'm not really sure how to answer that in the uh, in the format of the question. To be honest, um, I guess we could say leaning true in the sense that um, uh, yes, it does absolutely uh, apply to uh, uh, false prophets. I think that. Um, I think that we, I think it's clear that in this, in this, you know, uh, in this verse that in the context, he's talking about, uh, about false prophets who are, whether wittingly or not, um, acting in service of Satan, but they are still uh, uh, subject to the offer of salvation. So, um, so I would say, yeah, definitely like leaning true. I, but, you know, honestly, uh, the false prophets, they are acting in service of Satan. And oftentimes we see those two things used interchangeably. So I understand why people um, will use this verse uh, in reference to Satan, because it is ultimately true um, in principle that uh, that Satan is uh, is their father. Uh, if they're um, if they're unsaved and they're preaching a false gospel and they're, um, uh, you know, acting as a wolf. Although I guess we could also say that there are people that are already saved even that will end up, you know, that that can end up doing that. Um you know, uh, you know, un- unwittingly, they can, you know, uh, uh, go into error and begin pre- preaching falsely. And I think that they would still be uh, a-, a wolf in that context. That w- wouldn't you think? I mean, if somebody uh, begins preaching error, something that could even be um, damnable. Um, uh, I think, you know, at least most of us on the panel agree that, uh, uh, you know, believers can go into apostasy to that degree. So um, it's just an interesting question. But yeah, I'll say leaning true. Okay, thank you. Let me see. All right, uh, who's next? Did everybody else go? Yeah, I, I'm having a hard time remember who, who's gone yet. Steve, if you haven't gone, <laughs> why don't you go ahead? Okay. Um, and I would say that's why uh, Ephesians chapter 4 tells us to grow up in the Lord and to learn and to study and to all those things so that we're not tossed about, you know, that that's why God gave us the fivefold uh, ministries to the body of Christ, apostles, prophets, teachers, etc. He gave all those to, um, to, to help us to grow so that we don't, uh, so that we grow up in the Lord so we are not tossed around by every wind of doctrine. Um, and uh, I didn't uh, make 
this question, but I asked for this question after reading that passage in First Thessalonians where it talked about the 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 thief uh, or the the day of the Lord coming as a thief in the night, and and then this passage talks about the thief cometh not to but to but for to steal to kill and destroy. Uh, so I thought that was an interesting follow up uh because we're talking about uh the the end times yes but also we're talking about in this passage what Jesus came to accomplish and I think it is I, I agree with Angel that it is both that in in part of when we're looking at the English language, it does it doesn't say a thief as in a a when you use the the letter a to describe a thing, a person, place, or thing, you are giving it just a generic reference. When you put the thief or the person, place, or thing, you are talking about a specific thing person, place, or thing. So I do think it is talking about the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy uh, as being the devil. And I'll reference First Peter cha- chapter 5, uh, verse 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Well, those three things would certainly fall into the category of being devoured, to be st- to be stolen from, to be killed, and to be sh- destroyed. Certainly, sounds like being devoured to me. Um, but as far as like you know the the actual context of the verses surrounding that, like what Luke and uh, Angel mentioned that it does talk about all these people before Christ that could have also been, let's say, antichrist figureheads, like uh, one that we could easily be shown to be that was, um, you have your Stalins, you have your Hitlers, you have even going way back to to the... Tower of Babel. I forget who who the name is. That that um, one of you guys probably knows who I'm talking about. That was back then that they worshipped as a deity. Nimrod. You're, be, you're thinking yes. about Nimrod. Yes, exactly. He was an antichrist figurehead or uh, a, a the thief example. Um, but I do think just like Angel and and Lisa said, that there are people that can operate underneath, whether willingly or ignorantly, what the devil wants and cause stealing to be done, killing to be done, and destruction to be be done. Um, For example, what we see happening in America, burning, looting, and murder. Um, and yes, I did it, did that on purpose. Um, um, but yeah, I mean, that, that is clear to me being done under the spirit of the, uh, of the antichrist, the spirit of wickedness, the spirit that is being orchestrated by the devil, you know, they may that, and with anything the devil does, that he doesn't create anything. So some of these things might have started out as a good idea, but as has often been said, the road to hell is paved with good intentions because things start out well, but if they're not anchored in the rock that is Christ and stay anchored, you can go all kinds of ways that are just, just bad. So to answer the question uh, that, it's both. Um, so I am sure I chose undecided because <laughs> I can't choose one or the other because I do believe it is it is say it is specifically talking about Satan, but it's also talking about people who are doing these things that are those just like he said uh, to 
the Pharisees when they came and tried to tell him he was being, you know, how can you hang out with these sinners? Well, guess what, buddy? I came for them. I came to give them life. Yeah, those sinners. That's who I came for. I didn't come for you self-righteous in self-righteous indignation people. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, technically he did come for them. If they'll just admit that they're a sinner and believe on Jesus. And, you know, that's how that goes. So, believe the gospel and be saved and you're the one that Jesus died for. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, who hasn't taken a turn on this one? Uh, all right. I haven't. I don't know if Lisa did, has or not. Go ahead, Ben. Okay. Uh, yeah, I did. I did already. Okay. Well, I, I think, again, this passage, Jesus is basically saying, you know, um, I'm the true shepherd. And they're, you know, I think he's mostly, well, he talked to Israelites. Uh, and and they there's a lot of examples in the Old Testament where there were false prophets, false shepherds that tried to lead his people away. Um, and I, when Jesus says, you know, the sheep hear his voice, they will not listen to a stranger. Um, again, he's being very general here. It doesn't mean like, oh, well, if you ever heard, listen to a false uh, person or you ever led astray, uh, you must have never been one of his sheep. He's not saying that at all. He's just using general terms like all. He's saying things like all who uh, listen to him, um, uh, hear his voice, uh, are, are uh, heed his voice, essentially. So, and again, there's all kinds of examples of the Old Testament even where even believers were duped by false teachers. Um and again, I think he's referring to the false prophet. He's saying, I'm not like the false prophets that led Israel astray so many times and the false Christs. I think there was a, the, the Maccabees had, uh, did they have some kind of uh, Messiah, they said. Um, so there, there's all kinds of examples, both before and after uh, Jesus is coming. Uh, people claim to be the Christ. Um, and I think that's going to increase uh, as we get near the end times. Um, but also to... Whenever I, I, I've noticed a pattern that whenever you see the thief, a word about the thief or a reference to robbing or thieving, it's always referenced to a, an unbeliever um, because the law demands. And so the law takes like a thief, whereas grace gives. Uh, it never it never takes. It gives. And so, like, for example, a lot of the parables you see in Jesus uh, when he's talking to Israel, he says, uh, even what he has will be taken from him. Well, what does he have? If an unbeliever under the law thinks he's keeping the law, he has treasures in the law. He he's uh, you know he's decorated himself, so to speak, with all the trappings of the law and thinks he's keeping it. And when Christ comes, it's going to be taken away from him because he thought he understood the law, but the law was really intended to point to something greater. But because he he refused to see, he was blind to spiritual truth. He was spot blind to the spirit of the law. He just all he saw was the letter of the law. Uh, it will be taken away from him. Um, and I, I think every example you see in scripture where you see about thieves and robbers, it's always referring to an unbeliever because an unbeliever's relationship to the law, um, it, it, there's no advantage. They, they have no advantage on, to the law. The law can only take from them. And that's what Satan is. Satan uh, Satan loves the law because he knows it. That's what he used. Uh, he, knew, he knew God's justice and condemnation would condemn man, and that's why he knew he tried to weaken man by uh, getting them to partake of something that would essentially marry them to something that's weak, which is the law. And Christ came to uh, so we could be married to something stronger, the spirit. Um, and also, too, like you guys said, uh, yes, absolutely, even false teachers can be uh, saved. In Second Peter, it says, uh, but there'll be men who crept in unawares, uh, uh, speaking um, destructive heresies, essentially paraphrasing, even denying the master who bought them. So if they're, they're denying it, they, they were bought by Christ. He paid the, they would just turn to him and believe in him. He purchased them, but they never cashed in, so to speak. And um, and it, 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 even then, that, that second Peter is not saying, oh, well, any person who denies Christ uh, cannot be saved. It's not saying that whatsoever. In fact, second Peter is a prophecy because he's basically challenging his believers saying, hey, you need to grow uh, build yourself up in their most holy faith. If you don't, 
you're blind. You're blind to the old sins. You're, you're blind to who you actually are. You're blind to the fact that you your sins have been purged. Um, and so you need to, um, so that you don't stumble into apostasy, you need to build yourself up in the most holy faith because you'll never stumble if you abide in sound doctrine um, and, and uh, pursue the path of growth. Whereas the false teachers, they say that we're making um, cleverly devised fables because uh, they're, they're the, the false teachers that were basically uh, saying, uh, challenging the apostles' authority uh, and saying, no, uh, you, they're teaching f cleverly false devised fables, uh, true grace allows you to do whatever you want. It doesn't restrict you from, uh, you know, fulfilling your lusts. Um, and we know that's, that, that's, that's just bondage. Uh, uh, sin is bondage, but they, they twisted it. They twisted the scripture to, the own, to their own destruction. Uh, but again, even Christ bought them, but this was a prophecy. God sent these false teachers to challenge, I believe, that specific church of, 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 of Israelite, believe, most, of, mostly Hebrew believers, um, and it's a prophecy. He's saying this will happen to you guys. And so I'm telling you ahead of time and you need to build yourself up ahead of time so that even though, even though I'm telling you ahead of time, I'm not only am I telling you it's going to happen ahead of time, you need to build yourself up and you'll never stumble. And you'll never become, you'll never be captured by these false teachers. And, but if you do, instead of partaking of the, of the, of the divine nature, which it talks about, you'll, you'll be partaking in the beast, beast nature, which is the sow and the dog. Um, but again, saved believers, but Christ even died for, for them. So uh, that's my answer. Hmm. All right. Well, a lot of interesting things have been said uh, on this question. So uh, does anybody want to add more? No. Is that it? Is that it? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Seems like it was an excellent question. A lot of people enjoyed that one. Uh, who who sent us that question, Ben? I believe that was from Brother Dave uh, in chat either last week or the week before that. Okay. All right. Very good. So to answer Brother Dave, yes, we are taking questions from chat, but uh, we probably won't get to it until next week. So anyone who wants to post a question in chat for us to address, we can certainly do that, but it might not be a week or so. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. I'm glad you mentioned that, Ben, because I, I noticed someone had asked a question earlier uh, at the beginning of the program, and uh, uh, I wanted to acknowledge that we 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 got the question, but when we, it it's not fair to take a question we just get now and put it ahead of a question that someone's already been waiting for a week or so to, for us to get to it. So we just when we get a new question, we put it on our list, but at the at the end of the list, uh, unless there's some urgent reason we need to address it right away. Uh, all right, if there's nothing else on that, can we go to the next question? Okay, this is another question from someone. I don't know who it was from. I think it might be from Heather Bridgman. It's a good one. It is. The reason the Israelites despised the Gentiles was that God hated them. I, I'm assuming God, they, I think it's what he's trying to say is that Israelites despised the Gentiles because God hated the Gentiles as well. True or false? Hmm. Okay. Uh, well, Heather wrote it. So, Ben, why don't you go first on this one? Uh, someone else go first, please. Just uh, I got to get the question posted up there. So if someone could just go, I'll, I'll go right after the next one. How about Brother Cripps? Can you go next? Yeah, I'll be really quick. I don't, I don't know. Uh, I, I, it, it could be. Um, I think they had, uh, like, for instance, Samaritans, they had a lot of reasons to, to hate them. But all Gentiles... Uh, uh, I, I'm not, I'm just not sure of that. I haven't ever thought about this, honestly. Uh, so I don't feel like I, I can answer uh, anything but undecided. I, I uh, would have to look more into it. Um, hmm. That's an interesting question, though. Uh, sorry, I don't have more on that one. All right. Well, I can go and ask because it'll be so short. Uh, well, just remember, who are the Gentiles? It's like 99 point nine five percent of every person who's ever lived the the, the fact the, the percentage of humanity that are non-gentile a non-gentile is a jew if you're not a jew you're a gentile so everybody that's not jew is a gentile and that means that almost every person that's ever lived uh this that's what we're talking about here do we really think that god hates all of the world I mean, it contradicts everything we know about God and everything the scriptures say. So I can't see how this 
It could be uh, that uh, uh, the Jews hated them because God had hated them. Uh, no, they had their other reasons. I'm not sure what the reasons were. Uh, God did tell them not to mix with them because uh, if they intermarried and, and mingled with them and um, uh, were integrated, uh, they uh, the, uh, their false religions would rub off and it would, you know, a little leaven uh, leavens the whole lump. And, and that's also adultery uh, is that it, you, it's no longer pure Judaism when you mix paganism with it. So that's the reason that they were told not to uh, mix. And maybe that's the reason that the Jews hated them. But I don't think it's because God hated everybody who is ever born apart from the Jews. That's the conclusion you have to come to if you take this question uh, based on the definitions of the words. All right. Uh, who wants to go next? I can go now, I guess. Go ahead. Um, well, I think the uh, Israelites um, hated the Gentiles because they, they again, they saw everything according to the flesh. They didn't see uh, that they couldn't figure out that God made all man uh, and that he would love them. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I think it's a supernatural hate because the law, again, the law always points to self. And so they thought they were, uh, they thought not only according to their flesh, they were privileged, but also because God gave them the law that they were privileged, which they were. Um, but the they that they looked, they took that knowledge and looked used it to look down on others because uh, they thought that they were obviously righteous and no one else was. They considered everyone else a dog. And the 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 scripture is uh, all through scripture you see reversals. So like uh, one of the reversals is that uh, the Jews called the Gentiles dogs, and then in Revelation you see that uh, unbelievers are referred to as dogs. Um, and so there's, there's all kinds of, uh, flip flopping back and forth in scripture. Uh, I, I really love how that's written because the law <clears throat> always boomerangs. Um, they always boomerangs right back on, on you, everything you judge, the measure you judge will be measured back to you. Uh, and that's what the, uh, that's what the Israel, uh, that's what the Israelites did. The law makes you self-centered and, um, uh, really despise everyone, everyone else, whereas grace just does the exact opposite. So that yeah, I, I I totally believe they they uh, hated them. And in fact, I, again, I'll point this up example again. But again, a picture of of a prophetic picture, I believe, of of fu Israel's future hate for the Gentiles, I believe, is in uh, uh, Genesis where the where, where Joseph ha has his brothers over to eat, and the Egyptians, which are a picture of Israelites' future because they're in the house of bondage, um, they the Egyptians look down. It despised the uh, the Israelites, uh, Joseph's brothers, because they were shepherds, and the Egyptians were very um, prejudiced and uh, racially prejudiced, and hated Asiatics uh, or anyone at that time that was a Hebrew, essentially, because um, they wouldn't even sit with them. And that's what, exactly what Peter was doing uh, when Paul had to rebuke him for not being straightforward with the gospel. He rebuked him in front of them, all of them, for not. For for uh, causing divisions, essentially saying no, we we are um, uh, even though we're both Christians, we both we both believe in the grace of God. Um, you know, you're 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 a, a Gentile. We're we're uh, Jews, so we're not going to sit together with each other. So uh, yeah, there was a very spiritual hate. Um, and again, even Bible talks about uh, the 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 child of of. The child of the flesh, uh, Ishmael, uh, would mock and hate the child of promise, um, just like the Jews mocked and hated Christ on the cross, and they mock and uh, mock and hate us even today. So, very deep rooted. Okay, thank you, uh, Sister Lisa. Uh, my answer is certainly false. I think I answered that right. I get, I get twisted around with some of these true and false questions. Ben, would you repeat the question again? Make sure I'm saying that right. Sure. The reason the Israelites despised the Gentiles was that God hated them. Yeah, I answered that false. Um, they, uh, they had great difficulty because they were judging, as Ben was pointing out, uh, according to the flesh. And the law, even even the words of God, it didn't change from the old covenant to the new. Um, they're still spirit. 
the the letter of this word is not the spirit of this word. And so there was a lot of misunderstanding that they had, with the exception of a remnant that I, the Lord said he always reserved for himself that did understand and did get it. Uh, this is why they were commanded, for example, that the stranger came to dwell among them and he was going to dwell peaceably and adopt their the laws of God, and as far as the covenant went and honored the covenant, that they could uh, be among them without any issue or problem. Uh, and, uh, for example, the reason that the uh, Jews didn't like the Samaritans was they were half, they were half Jews. They were mixed with Gentiles. But the... Uh, and so there's there's always been this kind of rivalry thing going on back and forth. Um, there is a supernatural hatred for the original people of God. And I think when they were in their error, <laughs> they had a hatred back towards those that were hating them, which, of course, is not the spirit of Christ. So uh, there was a lot of conflict going back and forth on both sides. Some zealous uh, for the truth, but without the spirit of the Lord, that zeal can be uh, detrimental. And they ended up going into bondage numerous times because of this error, as well as idolatry, uh, until they would get to the understanding that God wanted everybody to be saved. And I've often pointed out the Hebrews were created with a particular purpose in mind. One, to bring forth the promised Messiah. Uh, to, well, first, to be a witness to the world before the Messiah uh, under the law. And then two, to bring forth the promised Messiah. And then three, uh, to preach the gospel to all the world. And with the believing remnant, those things were fulfilled, thankfully, or we wouldn't have Jesus. And then the first church was indeed Hebrew. So, and then a mixture with Gentiles coming in, believing the gospel and hearing the gospel from them. We, we see that from Paul, Peter, they were Hebrew. They were taking the gospel to the world and then they were Gentiles. They came in with believers, and there was not supposed to be any difference between them as long as they all had Christ in common. And the Judaizers were the ones coming in stirring up trouble, as well as other heathens and paganism that would creep in from the Gentiles. And so Paul was dealing with this, as you see throughout the scripture. He's dealing with both things. He's dealing with Judaizers, and he's dealing with paganism because the church is neither of those things. So... I think I've answered. I think I've said everything that I wanted to say on that. All right. Thanks. Uh, let me see. Who's who's next? Who hasn't spoken yet? Um, I, I don't. I have. I don't know if there's anybody else that can can go. I, I'm 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 looking something up really quickly before I answer the question. But if I'm the last person, okay. then how about, I'll how about, go ahead. Is there anyone else who who hasn't answered it yet? Everybody's had a turn, so. That's right. Um, I don't see that. <laughs> I was trying to get to my mic button. Oh, okay, Steve. Go ahead. Uh, basically, ditto. Um, I'll reference Romans 11, 11. Uh, but basically, Romans 11, the entire chapter really is talking about this um, as to why... Uh, some of these things, but God never hated the Gentiles except for hating sin. And that's kind of, I'll have to say that's kind of wrong because if that wasn't, if that was the case that he never did, then I don't think we would have had the flood. So there, there was a, you know, I think, you know, and that's also why God, said he'd never do that again but he hates the wickedness of man and how bad it can get and that's why the last destruction will be by fire um as it won't be by water uh but anyway god has said he he hates the sin in effect does not hate the sinner because he is slow in keeping his promises, not wanting anyone to perish, but that all might come to repentance, i.e. believing the gospel to be saved. Um, 
but Romans eleven eleven says, I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall talking about the Jews? <laughs> Excuse me. Um, God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy, to, pro- to provoke the Israelites to jealousy. So, um, yeah, uh, the purpose of that is to cause the Jews to turn back to the true and living God, which they and the way of grace, the way of salvation, as has been preached since the fall of man in the Garden of Eden. The gospel was preached then. So, uh, yeah, they went away trying to do things by the law instead of instead of through grace. And that's the whole point, I believe. That God didn't hate the Gentiles. That's not why the Jews hated the Gentiles. It was like Ben and pretty much everybody else said um, that uh, they hated the Gentiles because they thought they were somehow better than because they were given the law. I'm sure there's a scripture that uh, speaks to that directly. Hmm, okay, all right. Thanks. Uh, Angel, are you ready now? Yes. Uh, it, was a, it was a dead end lead, uh, really. But um, um, so basically, uh, I, I feel uh, uh, everything everyone stated already is, is true. I do think, for me at least, what I, I hone in on the most is that, um, uh, that really the reason that they looked down upon the Gentiles, it was really a reflection of the fact that uh, – you know, obviously, they're a remnant is the ex- exception, but the the vast majority of um, the people of Israel, uh, the you know, the people that were given the law, the, the chosen people, uh, they they totally took the bait in in essence, because I feel that that God uh, He knew when He set them apart and He told them that they were the chosen people and He gave them the law, He knew that there was only going to be a very few that understood that the only thing chosen about them was Jesus. They were chosen as the people who would eventually uh, bring forth uh, Christ in the flesh through their own lineage. And they would um, uh, uh, obviously be the keepers of the law. They would, uh, they would be the ones who uh, uh, really uh, uh, carried the torch up until a point, but he knew that there was going to be this incredible temptation for them to glory in themselves and their flesh and their heritage, racial pride, essentially racial pride, um, which uh, is obviously one of the most repugnant forces on earth. And we've seen it do uh, an incredible amount of damage repeatedly over and over again. Um, and the, 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 the issue is that, I mean, if, in my, in my, you know, I feel one of the uh, one of the greatest reasons that that they had such contempt for Christ was because he was um, the, the he he was what was special about them, and he also came um, at, to deliver the gospel to the whole world, and he came to reprove them and show them, no, you, you know, you got it wrong. You have t- you have gloried in all the wrong things. You have. Um, uh, uh, totally missed the point of this that was given to you and entrusted to you by God. And, um, and, and I feel that they, 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 they were threatened. Uh, their, their sense of racial superiority essentially was threatened because it was clear that somehow that the, the, they thought that he was going to come and actually um, uh, set them up as rulers of the whole world over these people that they viewed as inferior to themselves. But they also had this persecution complex, this victim complex, because they were they were they were limited in number, and they felt somehow persecuted by the fact that they weren't ruling and reigning over the Gentile world. They felt they were entitled to do that, and they thought that that was what their Messiah was going to was going to accomplish for them. They weren't even interested in the spiritual aspect. They weren't even interested in um, the the salvation that uh, that he was accomplishing at the cross. They were um, they had missed that completely. They were looking for this uh, earthly kingdom, and 
uh, that they thought they would be the beneficiaries of um, for their own, just because they thought that it that, that they were entitled to it just for their own uh, sense of racial superiority. And um, I think that uh, they got uh, obviously and knew that this was going to happen from the beginning. And it, and it is a set forth as an example as an example to us, um, you know, the peril that we all uh, we all face when we uh, have to choose between loving the things of the world and the flesh or loving the things of God. And um, I, so to me, I, I think that uh, you know, obviously they also felt superior because they felt that they were, you know, they were keeping, they were keeping God's laws and they were, they were, um, they were privy to some, um, some knowledge and some morality that the, that the Gentiles just weren't even capable of. Although the Bible repeatedly mentions that, 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 that um, the Jews were guilty of some things uh, uh, <laughs> equally as, if not worse than that was, you know, that were known, of, of, you know, um, among the Gentiles, but things that they were, you know, they were involved in all sorts of paganism and wickedness, um, uh, you know, f- from the very beginning. Um, and in, in a, it's really um, kind of amazing that uh, that the the chosen people were also uh, I, I mean it's it's almost hard to imagine some of the the, the, the displays of ingratitude that we see you know uh, it, coming from them you know to God Himself to those you know that even right after He leads them out of out of you know bondage and you know in this miraculous display parting the Red Sea and they're already showing this uh, you know as God. God uh, calls it stiff neckness and also just this, uh, what I, uh, what I see is it's just a profound ingratitude um, uh, already complaining and already wanting to go back. I mean, it's, it's almost, almost hard to imagine <laughs> after seeing these miracles performed by God himself, just for you. And you're already complaining. And I think that they're supposed to serve as an example for us all j- just to, just to how um, wicked man is. And just how ungrateful and how merciful God is and how um, because he made sure to really, really, he gives us literally no reason whatsoever to look at the Jews and be uh, impressed by them at all throughout scripture. Not at all. <laughs> Quite the opposite, really. And, and, and we're supposed to see and look yet still my mercy abides in them. I, I um, you know, uh, I'm devoted to them. I, you know, he, he's not going to turn his back on them. Because, and that's supposed to be a picture to us as to how loving and forgiving and merciful he is. Because, um, uh, and I think a lot of, I know a lot of unbelievers, especially, you know, and myself included, um, I couldn't believe some of the things I saw, you know, I knew of in scripture when I was an unbeliever. And one of the hardest parts about it was when I first got saved, but I I struggled to understand, like, I I, I was just, I I felt, resentment almost at the fact that he that that these people that i saw is just really the way the bible describes them is just very uh, just kind of atrocious in a lot of ways um uh jerks and i'm like and they're the chosen really like i can't even why (laughs) you know and now i get it i get it because that's the point because that's the point because we it has nothing to do with our own merit we don't merit uh god's love and his mercy he gives it to us freely and unconditionally as believers and that's what they're a picture of and i think that's why he also gave us so so much in scripture to to make us aghast at their behavior um and um i think that uh, that 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 sense of superiority and hatred and contempt and uh, is is you know toward the gentiles that's just one that's part and parcel that's part that's just part of it um their pridefulness uh uh was just yet another reason uh why we would have to really understand grace to understand why why he chose them and why why uh, uh, he remained so committed to them um, and they didn't uh, lose their status as the chosen people just because of their wickedness. Um, it, you know, if any if any of that makes sense to anybody, but uh, but no, absolutely false. It, it's not because God hated 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 the Gentiles. That's uh, you know, and the Gentiles were. Um, you know, we see it, it almost seems like it was much easier in a lot of ways for, for the ministry to go forth uh, and the gospel to go forth to the Gentile world than it was into uh, into uh, the chosen people 
um, uh, because uh, uh, prophet is not known in his own country, as uh, as 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 Jesus said. So, um, but yeah, that is that's my answer. I could go on about this for a long time, but <laughs> tonight I'm I'm still a bit scattered. So, <sighs> mm -hmm. hmm. okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, a lot of interesting uh, theories on that. I, I don't really think it really says. Uh, so I'm glad that nobody took a strong position like uh, several times someone was able to quote a scripture that gave us a, a actual answer right from the Bible so that there's no doubt what the answer is. But in this case, it doesn't clearly say. So we have to just kind of uh, theorize it, I guess. But um, so I think we've, uh, does anybody want to say more about this before we start uh, finishing up? Yes, please. Uh, just real quick, uh, I just popped into my head the, the 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 story that Jesus tells of the Samaritan. Um, uh, where where the the Samaritans walking from, you know, Israel to Samaria or whatever, and he gets attacked and jumped and beaten up and everything, and I believe that shows why uh, basically what angel said is pride pride over their their uh, ability in that they thought of being able to keep themselves in that lowly center that's all beaten up and what they were really doing was judging the person for being a samaritan for being another race which is just wrong yeah, definitely wrong. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, all right. Well, we've got now enough time left to uh, summarize, but cover, cover a few other things, too. Uh, let me make a couple of points here uh, that I've noticed uh, in the chat room. Um, uh, Jessica has made a comment that uh, I guess it's a kind of too serious, the, the, the subjects and issues. Is it too, can we end up? on something positive, possibly a devotional. So as we as we make our closing remarks, I would ask everybody to try to throw something positive in there for Jessica and anybody else who needs some encouragement uh, when you make your, your uh, closing remarks. Uh, also, let me respond to Brother Hendricks. Uh, he sent me an email. It's been quite a while. It's, Hendricks, I didn't ignore it. <laughs> uh, uh, that's why I wanted to speak to you, so I could give you an explanation. Uh, I'll, I'll take the opportunity now. Uh, Hendricks has an idea about us studying uh, the uh, Psalms and uh, some of the old hymns and uh, doing it on a Friday program. And I've, uh, brother, I'm, it's, it's not that I'm not interested in studying Psalms or, or studying hymns. In fact, uh, I have a I think I have a playlist of maybe five or six of the most famous hymns where uh, we did study them, you know, line by line. And it was a wonderful thing. I love the hymns and it's a worthwhile study because the, the gospel is more clearly stated in the hymns than it is in most churches. Um, the problem though, Brother Hendricks, is that uh, it's just not practical to do that on the Friday night program. It's just not the format that we have. And to try to incorporate that in here, I think it would be just too cumbersome. Also, I don't think you're considering the complexity of the Psalms. Um, I, I, I've done a lot of uh, uh, playlists and uh, my teachings on uh, topics, topical studies, um, character studies about individuals in the Bible. But also, I've done a lot of teachings on textual studies where you go verse by verse. We've done many of the, many of the books of the Bible. My, I've done it myself, and we've done it on Wednesday nights. But Psalms is something altogether different. I'm not quite confident that uh, uh, we could just take on a Psalm. So uh, uh, particularly in this scenario, it's just it requires too much. It's too deep. There's too much to it to try to you know, impose it into this program. But uh, I would say that uh, maybe we can get uh, uh, Lisa or, or Renee or Angel or something, or one of them, or maybe Steve, if, if they can have some programs and do some kind of a, accommodate you what you want, brother, uh, to study the Psalms and the hymns. So maybe someone can yeah. uh, 
can do That's that a good idea. to accommodate yeah, talk about that. desire for that. Um, okay. Yeah. That's what I just wanted to say to catch up with a couple of things in the chat room. So let's take some time now to uh, uh, like give our, our summary remarks. And, and also, let's see if we can't uh, accommodate Jessica's uh, uh, desire also here. In your closing remarks, if you can have some kind of exhortation or encouraging message uh, for the church, that would be nice. Um, who, would, who would like to go first with your uh, summary and closing remarks? I'll be happy to go. Okay, go ahead, brother. Uh, well, first of all, uh, especially right at the beginning, it was definitely a fun Fellowship Friday. <laughs> uh honestly it's uh uh good to fellowship with steve and i'm glad he's here glad he had a chance to to do that uh haven't haven't talked to him in a while uh but with some people in many ways it's like uh no no time uh actually went by i mean that, I, I find that interesting that there are a few people you don't talk to in a while but when you do talk to them again it's just like hey you know it, it, it nothing seems to have passed uh, between you, at least on my end, that's the way I feel. So uh, I'm I'm glad you were here, Steve. And, Can I give uh, you an amen? You going to get an amen on that one? Yeah, sure. Amen. I'll take all the amens I can get. Uh, so that was great. Amen. Um, the the questions were uh, excellent and some interesting answers tonight for sure. But the uh, all the questions were great, and um, I was glad to be a part of it. Uh, as far as an exhortation. Uh, I guess the, the best thing I can say right now is uh, regardless of what craziness and lies are going on in the world, uh, that uh, keeping your eyes focused on Christ and reading his word uh, is the best way uh, to get through it. And I, I do believe 100 percent that God is there for all of his children and that uh, regardless of what we see, he does have a plan, uh, even though it, it might be difficult. Uh, for a while, if this is indeed the end times. I mean, they thought it was the end times many, many times before. I, I don't disagree that it seems like it is. Uh, sure feels like that right now because the, the world seems to be doubling down on evil for sure. Uh, but God is with us. And so that's my exhortation is just keep focusing on Christ and his word. And um, I, I believe uh, we'll get through this. And if not, we'll see him face to face. Thanks a lot, and good night to everyone in the chat. I hope you guys have a great week. Uh, and let's uh, not forget that uh, Jen was not with us tonight, Brother Cripps, so make sure you give her uh, our love from everybody for her, and, and I hope that she can be with us next week. Oh, thank you, Brother. Look, I, I certainly will do that, but I'm sure she'll listen uh, tomorrow when she gets up. But thank All you. Right. Okay. Uh, and, uh, okay, uh, the... Uh, the one being spoken about, uh, Brother Steve, uh, Stephen. What do you prefer anyway, Steve or Stephen? Steve. That'll work. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. Do you, do you object to being called brother? No. Okay. <laughs> I had I had someone uh, uh, I won't mention their name, but I was talking. Never to call me brother. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was talking to someone that not nobody here really knows them, but they have a channel, and I got in some private conversations with them. And then when I called them brother, uh, they they just really don't like it. They just think it's uh, I don't know. They're just suspicious of you know the people who throw around brother and sister all the time and the hypocrisy in the church. And he just really didn't, he's not comfortable with it, but uh, I'm happy everybody uh, here is, uh, seems to be okay with uh, being identified as a brother or sister. Mm. Go yeah. ahead. Brother Steven. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I was just going to say, I can understand. I could understand why somebody might have trouble with that. Might be a kind of a PTSD thing for someone who was, you know, possibly abused or used by someone in the church by using those kinds of words as a manipulation tactic Amen. to to get by on you yep. um, by by trying to sound and look Christian when they treated you and used you. Mm -hmm. So I can certainly understand that. Um, uh, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't, yeah. I don't. Steve, Stephen, brother, whatever. Hey, <laughs> hey, you. 
<laughs> Mad Max. So what we're, doing, Steve, what we're doing now as we finish up is we want you to give us your summary of the discussion tonight. And also, if you have any like announcements or any closing remarks that you'd like to make, this is the time to do it. Okay. Uh, Hebrews 10, 24. And let us consider one another. Consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together like we're doing right now, as the manner of some is, but, but exhorting one another as so much more and so, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. So that is, that is my positive word as much as I can do it, that our Savior is returning. We see the day approaching, so let's provoke each other to love and to do good things in our world as we see the world decline all around us. Let's stand and not be the example of hatred. Instead, be the example of love. Um, as we see so much violence and everything happening, so much deception from everywhere you turn, you can't find the truth of what's actually happening. No. You know, on the news, they all seem to lie to you mm -hmm. almost all the time. And even the ones that try to tell you the truth, they're getting their news from sources that are uh, <clears throat> probably half truths at best. Yeah. So uh it's it's tough. But just know that if you believe the gospel, which is the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, he died for your sins, he was buried, all sins, past, present, and future. He died for them. Also nailing the law onto the cross that stood against us covering us w covering the law away from us so that now that because the law has been removed nailed to the cross that's why Paul says that where there is no law there is no transgression because we're not under law we're under grace because we have been paid for by the blood of Christ <clears throat> then Jesus was buried and he rose again bodily from the grave three days later. And if we believe that, if you believe that, that is what gives you eternal life from Jesus. So believe it if you haven't, and I'll see you in heaven someday. That's the good news I'd like to end with, stay is the your, gospel. Stay in your own lane, Steve. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> all right. All lives matter because Jesus died for all. Yeah, he did. Yes. Amen. Okay. Thank you, brother. That certainly was an, a positive note to end with for you. Uh, uh, brother, um, let me see. Uh, uh, brother Cripps, did you give a summary? I know you spoke just before him, but I can't remember if it was a summary or something else you said. No, I, I I did, and I went on and on about Steve, and he said nothing about me, yeah. just for the record. Yeah, unbelievable. Okay. Such, yep. such an oh. in, He's an oh. ingrate. Yeah. In <laughs> I, that hurts. I will not apologize, as you said. Blame it on my ADD, okay? <laughs> are you, are you, are you, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. You're on the borderline of exceeding the fun limit. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. <laughs> Don't crank have too much, too much crank fun it up some more. There's our heads, our heads might explode if we have too much fun. Mm -hmm. You know you missed Luke's dad jokes. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let me see. We had the, They're more uh, like grandpa jokes than dad jokes. <laughs> Okay, let's have, uh, since the Angel is uh, being so assertive now, go ahead and assert your closing remarks, sister. If you have any announcements or any exhortations to make, go ahead. 
Well, um, one, um, I, I do want to say that uh, uh, I believe uh, uh, Ben, and Steve, and I are going to be doing a, a sort of impromptu broadcast tomorrow evening at some point on Steve's channel. So please, um, if you want to check that out, uh, go subscribe to his channel. It's Soldier for Christ. We are at war. Um, you should probably be able to see it in the chat. Um, um, so, or somebody maybe who's not on a phone could enter that uh, in the chat otherwise. But um, that's going to be uh, sometime tomorrow evening. Uh, is, that's about as much as we can pinpoint it right now. Um, but um, as for uplifting things, you know, I'm really uh, just so happy that Steve has uh, made his way back uh, to, to be with us because um, he was very, he was sorely missed. And um, I, uh, I'm hoping, I, I know Ben and I have talked about it a bit, you know, that, that we'll be able to actually reach out to some more people uh, that we haven't heard from in a while that, um, uh, you know, we're, we're wonderful, uh, co contributors to the fellowship, you know, and, you know, faces we haven't seen, because I do think that we should draw nigh to each other, uh, especially in times like these. And, uh, I also just, uh, I think that, um, it, it really, uh, enlivens, uh, our panel discussions to, uh, to, to, to bring more people in the fold. And we could also, you know, uh, we might be doing some more content too, just, uh, um, uh, like, uh, Hendrix had suggested with the with the analysis of Psalms, you know, maybe we could uh, we could, uh, you know, I can't commit everybody to this, but you know, between uh, all of our channels, maybe uh, maybe some, uh, some of us would uh, would get together and do that, Hendrix, because uh, I do like to to hear from you guys about um, different ideas that you have, things that you want to see. Um, you know, sometimes things can get repetitive, so that's a, that's a good that's a good idea, and I know Ben and I have discussed uh, trying to do more of that. Um, and, you know, I just, uh, I think that one of the most encouraging things I could add to uh, uh, to Steve's gospel presentation is just that it is the object of our faith and not the quality of that faith or any quality that we may or may not possess that is our salvation. It's the object, which is Christ and his finished work on the cross, that is what saves us. And it is not... Um, the way that we display our faith or the way that we uh, we assess our own faith, nothing like that that is actually what saves us. It's not our, it's not our, our, our um, devotion to serving the Lord. None of those things are what save us. And I, I, I can't think of anything more encouraging than that because it really is, um, it is all about Jesus. And I do think, as Lisa says many times, you know, God is on a, a, a search and rescue mission. And um, I, I, I truly believe that once he grabs a hold of you, he doesn't let go for, for anything. No, you know, even if you try, uh, even if you try, he's got you, um, you know, for all eternity. And uh, I've said before, he sets the bar really, really low uh, because he can't, he can't uh, count on us for any part of it. He can't count on us for anything. He can't even count on us to be truly grateful for what he's done for us. Um, and that's why, um, it is really just as simple as what we're placing our faith in. And, um, uh, aside from that, you know, I just, I had a great time tonight and I also want to remind everybody, well, I, i at least right now I'm, I'm thanking the Lord for Chinese people because they ended up making Chinese food and Chinese food is, is <laughs> just delicious. And I'm about to go eat a whole bunch of it. And, um, and I just really wanted to thank God for that. You know, <laughs> I never thought to thank him for making Chinese people. He made a lot of them too. So, <laughs> um, but anyway, I, I love you guys. And uh, yeah, just please uh, check us out tomorrow night um, on Steve's channel. Wow. Sister, <laughs> that was funny and uh, really beautiful. I heard my microwave ding as I was in there. I was like, oh, yeah, I should think. I was going to thank you privately, but you might as well. well. How often do we really think about the Chinese? I don't think about mm -hmm. them enough. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, Sister, uh, Sister uh, Lisa, are, are you thankful for the Mexicans? Because uh, I love Mexican food, too. Sister Lisa? Oh, yeah. Praise, praise the Lord. Okay. Praise <laughs> the Lord for everything the Lord has created. What racism going on tonight? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Racism yeah, is actually a social construct. The Bible speaks about ethnicities. When it says nation shall mm -hmm. rise against nation, that, that's actually what it means, ethnicity. Okay. Yes. Which is that's what we're seeing true. right now, as a matter of fact. But um, setting that aside, 
I wanted to read Ephesians chapter 2. For the sister that says she needed encouragement, I think this will encourage you. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sin, where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses and sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, or to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth, unto the holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. And I would just like to say that was my, I wanted to add to when we were talking about, you know, whether or not God hated the Gentiles. Um, find me where he hated the Gentiles in that passage because I don't see it. But uh, that being said, beloved, uh, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Um, there's a lot of confusion going on or some nonsense that went down and some ugliness and stuff that uh, uh, came out and exposed some things. So or tomorrow night, I will not be doing late night with Lisa and friends, but I will be doing a broadcast. And it will be a live stream tomorrow night, but it will just be myself. And I'm going to address some things that need to be addressed. So uh, if you want to hear it, come on over to my channel at eight, uh, roughly 8 p.m. Pacific. Uh, it will not be late night with Lisa and friends. As I said, it's going to be a live stream. We're going to speak and just pour out my heart about the things that I've observed. Not trying to stir up any trouble, but I think some things need to be addressed. And I've elected to do that uh, by myself so the, the chips can fall where they may right on me because I ain't scared to call the devil a devil and I ain't scared to call a spade a spade. So anyway, 
I hope that you all have a blessed and wonderful evening. In the mighty name of King Jesus, I love you all. Good night. Good night, Lisa. Thanks, Sister Lisa. Amen. We yes, amen to that, Sister. Okay. Uh, well, uh, the time tonight uh, flew by, but I'm, I'm getting used to that. I'm uh, actually adjusting my whole uh, concept of time. <laughs> it seems to be speeding up. Uh, we're having so much fun on these programs that uh, the time is just flying by. Uh, so, uh, but I do think that uh, uh, it's, it's always the case, but I'll just mention it tonight that uh, the, uh, the programs that we have here to, uh, and, and, the, and the fellowship is so beautiful. The, the, it, it is true fellowship. Uh, very rarely do we have any issues that need to be, uh, you know, problems that come up. Uh, it, it just, I know that we shouldn't be proud. Uh, uh, you know, we don't want to be proud of ourselves. And, and, and then if we're proud of others, then, you know, we we want all the glory to go to God. But I have to say that I'm very, very proud of the congregation, that uh, the way that everybody conducts themselves and the love and fellowship that we have. And I, I just greatly value it more than, more than anything. Uh, let me end by just, since we're all quoting scripture tonight, here's... Um, Something I'll leave you with this thought. It's, it's uh, Philippians 4, uh, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. All right. Thank you, everybody, for uh, joining us uh, tonight. Uh, I'll be looking forward to, uh, I guess there's two programs tomorrow. Uh, uh, Lisa's program at uh, 8 p.m. Pacific. That's 11 Eastern. And a uh, time to be determined for uh, on. Uh, uh, ben, could you put uh, the link to uh, Brother Steve's channel in the, in the uh, description box to, for this? Uh, so that everybody can access his channel. Subscribe to Steve's channel if you haven't already. And then, as he, they said, he's having a live program tomorrow with him and Angel uh, tomorrow night uh, on Steve's channel. And then there's another one, I guess, uh, with, with uh, Sister uh, uh, Lisa. All yeah, right. And it's it's, it's going to be Ben and me and Steve on the, on the okay. show. And, and it, it wasn't – it's not um, – we were going to do that earlier than, uh, than, than, than late night with Lisa and friends, but then Lisa also wanted to just do her own, her, do a broadcast uh, responding to some things uh, uh, tomorrow night anyway. So it just worked out that we wouldn't, instead of doing late night, she was going to do that because we were going to be doing this earlier anyway. So that's the only reason it, that, that it worked out that way. But, um, but yeah, it'll be Ben and um, Ben and I and Steve on Steve's channel. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody, and I look forward to seeing you next time. But don't forget to join us Sunday. Uh, it's the first Sunday of the month, so we'll have communion. That's 5 p.m. Eastern time on the same channel. Uh, bless you all in the name of our great Savior, God Jesus.